the character arcs that were introduced and tried to be concluded in episode nine hinged on the weird rules that they were introducing as the movie was as, going on. As it was happening, yep. Yeah. yeah, so so about 30 minutes into the film, my mind was already like, you know what? Fuck it. Sure. What? Yeah, we're doing that now. Why not? Uh, none of it. Well, okay. I, I was just kind of along for the ride. You... I felt like I was listening to a fairy tale, which is not bad. No, yeah. That's what Star Wars is. That, that's the, that's... But at some point. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no. Please go ahead. Yeah. Oh, it's. So fairy tales are interesting because they start with declarations that you just have to take. You know, mm -hmm. there is a princess. She is in space. She's been captured by an evil villain that knows magic. Okay. You, you got to just like rest your mind and take those things in. Sure. But once those things are established, then you can get into a human drama, which is the, you know, unfolding narratives, the conflict, the resolution, the low points, the high points. But when you keep declaring in the middle of that drama, for me at least, I lose the emotional investment because at any point, the, the storyteller can just swoop back in, declare something else, and then everything else has changed. And so I don't know, it feels super arbitrary to me at that point. Yeah, no, and, and so this is kind of, like, just so chat knows, well, by the way, chat, please refrain from putting spoilers in the chat currently, um, yeah. because uh, we're not there yet. When we get to there, you guys can totally talk about it. But for now, don't put spoilers in the chat in mm -hmm. case the people are, are hopping in here. Um, and also, all opinions are correct. It's okay if people yes. like it or not, it doesn't matter. Um, but, uh, but back to your point, Lawrence. So, like, I'm, I'm just going to talk about the way I felt about the movie initially. Because um, I, I got lucky. I got to see it a couple of days before it was even released. It was on, got to see it on a Tuesday. It was released on a Thursday night. And uh, I didn't look at any reviews. I didn't watch any of the trailers. I think I watched one trailer. I didn't know anything about the story. Um, so I wasn't biased either way with the, you know, Rotten Tomato score or whatever. Um and I was like you, Lawrence, where I like the first, so the first 30 minutes of the movie, they throw a lot of shit at you. And I was like, cool. All right. I'm fine with this. I'm fine with all of this. Like I'm, I'm, this, this all seems like it's part of Star Wars. Uh, I'm totally fine with some of the new rules they put into place. Um, no big deal. And then as the movie went on, it started to lose me. Um, and I was like, it was like a, and I, what's weird to me is that normally that doesn't happen with especially with Star Wars films, because with Star Wars, I know the universe so well, and I feel like I know the tone so well that I, I, I'm truthfully generally along for any ride when it comes to stuff, like, like Rogue One or The Mandalorian or any of the prequels. I was totally along for those, those rides, and like, they didn't really throw anything that was illogical at you in those movies. There are a few plot holes, obviously, as, with there, as there is with any movie. Um, but, for the most part, you can, get, you can get past most of them. Uh, and be like, ah, you know, whatever, fine, movie. It's a movie. <laughs> and, and this wasn't it. So this was, I'm trying to think of, like, I likened it to a Transformers movie. Or, uh, I'm trying to think of another movie. I just I just saw, like, another action movie like this. Where it, it's, it's a very defining line in my head. Where I'll watch it and be like, cool action, cool explosion, cool guns, cool laser swords, cool... Uh, of course, cool magic, cool. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, what the fuck? Wait a minute, hold on. And then, <laughs> and then, like, I gotta go and think about what happened because I've never seen that before and be like, why did it, what? And then the movie doesn't yeah. explain it. So I move on and go, all right, well, fine. I'll, I'll just throw that one away. And I'm pretty forgiving. Um, and then I, it happens again and it happens again. And this movie is a fucking rapid fire of that. It's just a yeah. constant bang, 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 over and over and over, things that, do not make any sense. The movie doesn't explain. And Star Wars, even Star Wars lore doesn't explain. Um, and yeah, uh. Fast, Fast and Furious is a good example. Uh, there's been a couple of times, like the most recent Fast and Furious I saw, I know you love these movies, Lawrence, but the most recent one I saw was like, by the end of it, I was like, well, they didn't explain any of this. Like, at least give me a one-off line throwing away why this exosuit works, you know, like. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, Hobbs and Shaw. Yeah, Hobbs and Shaw, exactly. Um gotcha. And so when I walked out of the movie and I came home to Autumn, because Autumn didn't see it with me, it was just me, I was like shell-shocked. I was like, <laughs> she, she asked me, she was like, what did you think of it? And I was like, I don't know. I was like, I don't know what I thought of it. I, I had some genuine moments in the movie. I liked it, parts of it. But then when I, at the end of it, I was like, I don't know what I think of Star Wars anymore. Um, and it made me really sad. <laughs> <laughs> that made me really, really sad. I don't know. Uh, you know, I agree. Um, I I felt sad and empty hey, after watching it too. Uh, and there are a lot of 
I, I kind of get it, and I don't blame anyone for it. And I'm not mad about it. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, I also I've I've seen some people say, well, maybe you don't like Rise of Skywalker anymore because you're an adult now and you don't have like your brain has lost the ability for fantasy. I don't think that's true either. <laughs> um, I think Rise of Skywalker was just, uh, I, if if you like look at it, it makes sense why. Um, because Last Jedi, I Thanks, kind of Jan. blame for a lot of things. I really don't like that film. <laughs> yeah. Um. But it probably its biggest failure is that it actively didn't do any of the things that an act two in a trilogy needed to do. Hmm. So, and I remember, I remember kind of complaining about this with you earlier, Bruce, is that going into episode nine, all the groundwork that an, an act two in a trilogy should have, should have laid wasn't there. Oh, right. So Ray yeah. had no conflict. Right. Ray was not a character and this is the protagonist of the entire trilogy. So that sucks. Um, none of the characters had any, uh, conflict established. It was its own self-contained movie, um, which was awful, really. Yep. Um, episode 7 didn't do a lot either, because I think Abrams didn't know where the series was going, so I think he tried to he tried to put in a lot of like open hooks for other writers and directors to run with. Mm -hmm. And then Ryan Johnson ignored them all, did his own thing. <laughs> and then J.J. had to come back in Episode 9, do the work that Episode 8 should have done, and then also do the work that an Episode 9 needs to do. And also fill in all the gaps that he left open from episode seven. So his calling was absurd. Uh, and I think he did the best job any human could do. Um, I think it was insurmountable, the amount that he had to accomplish in that film for like characters he had and all this, all the stupid plots he had to wrap up. Yeah. So I, I lay a lot of the pacing problems and also the, just the relentless exhaustion of that film at the feet of episode eight, really. Yeah. Cause they had to get through a uh, lot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I remember when episode nine starts, and, and I'm still going to be very vague, try to be sensitive to spoilers, but the opening crawl, I was like, oh, shit. Now I know what episode nine is about. Uh, and I was like, why wasn't that in Last Jedi? Right, right. The opening crawl should have been the first half of Last Jedi. And the first third of Rise of Skywalker should have been the last half of Last Jedi. Uh, this is that should have been the movie. This is not a spoiler, but they should have teased the Emperor in Last Jedi. Yeah. Um, yeah, and they didn't. Uh, this is, but everyone knows the emperor is exists. But they should have teased at the very end of last night because you're right. That would have been a great setup. Mm -hmm. That would have been like a like a oh okay so episode nine is going to resolve the emperor. Um, but that's a great that's a great point, Lance. It's uh and and I get to some degree why it didn't happen because of everything about Thanks, last Jedi Fist. was trying to invert Fist. Star Wars tropes, perhaps because everyone complained about uh, Force Awakens being too tropey. Whatever. Uh, but it turns out tropes exist because people like them. <laughs> yeah. They're tropes because they work. Um, so if you just do the opposite of every trope, it turns out it doesn't work. And that's kind of exactly, I think, functionally what we've seen. Is that the the second act of a trilogy, it's, you know, if we're, if we're talking Star Wars uh, tradition, it's supposed to have some big twist about parentage. Um, again, they undid that. It's supposed to have some new mystery to look forward to. It's supposed to introduce stakes and conflict for every character, which it actively didn't do. And those are all the things that had to happen in the first like twenty minutes of Rise of Skywalker, and they did. But fast. I, I guess it's <laughs> really yeah, fast. Really fast. <laughs> and that's kind of the thing is that, man, they had so many boxes to tick off on a whiteboard, and they ticked them all off. But it turns out there's another consequence for that, which is that nothing has room to breathe. Doesn't nothing has like well, no, time. Nothing had well, nothing had stakes. I mean, yeah. Some of the some of the some of the moments in the movie were emotional for me, but but they were emotional for the wrong reasons. They were emotional because like, I was like, Oh man, that's one of the original characters, but it wasn't, I didn't give a fuck about Ray Finn or Poe. Like I, and, and that was the problem is that like, I, and that's what I kept thinking throughout these movies with force awakens and last Jedi too. I was like, I was like, I don't care about any of these new characters. And, yeah. and I was, and I was, I was like, when am I going to care? <laughs> um, and I, I mean like, and, and, this is the this movie Rise of Skywalker gets you to care the most, I think. It does. Um, yeah. Of of those of those brand new three characters, um, but it's still not enough to feel like the movie stands on its own with those new characters, and that's I think that's always been my problem, and honestly, like kind of what I didn't really want from these movies. The more that I watch them now, the more I'm like, I just wish that they had given us, you know, like Han Solo doing Han Solo things and. Uh, Princess Leia doing Princess Leia things, and Luke Skywalker doing Luke Skywalker things, uh, in addition to new characters. Like, but 
they kept saying, no, no, like Disney was like, we want to establish these new characters. These are the new characters for the new generation. And I was like, that's fine, but they got to be good movies based around them. And maybe they should have just gotten rid entirely of Han Solo, uh, Leia, and Luke. Maybe they should have just not used them at all. They shouldn't have touched them. Um, because they should have done a Rogue One, or they should have done a, you know something like that, where it's just like... Oh, Mandalorian is another good example, uh, which is fantastic. And they're all new characters you've never heard of. It's great. They're great. Um, and, and I can care about those characters in these things. And I don't have to worry about, well, what about Luke? <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> I don't have to worry about any of that stuff because they're not even anywhere near those events. So, I don't know. Sorry, what were you going to say? Oh, uh, no, I, I mean, you're spot on. Um, Tech cart. The thing Three is, months, the cart. thing Thank is, you. like, episode seven did such a good job of introducing the potential of a lot of those characters, I thought um finn was an awesome character like uh indoctrinated since birth to be a stormtrooper suddenly he snaps out of it and then he's immediately put next to this brash idiot dude who always does what he thinks is right and like doesn't worry if he's going to fail uh so of course like finn develops like a bit of an obsession or or just like a boy crush on poe cool dynamic i'm into that sure yeah uh, makes sense for the character and then all of that is obliterated in episode eight yeah. now finn yeah. is the like jaded guy who just wants to party and drink and rose has to be the new like idealistic character yeah which is weird okay you've just undone everything about finn's character and development and arc all right fine and then in episode nine i don't even know like i i feel like they had no idea what to do with finn because they basically established his character and then undid his character in the second film mm -hmm. and now also we have rose here which oh boy she yeah. got done pretty dirty too completely underserved no yeah completely underserved yeah and uh, I mean, yeah they're just a ton of characters that all got thrown in none of them had a direction i think or or rather they did have direction at the end of episode seven and then ryan johnson just kind of ignored all of the all of the director's notes that were left for him uh it's uh, it's, it's weird because that's frustrating to think about yeah well i would like rose is a good example of it's funny because like i was thinking well like oh she didn't get any screen time and then i was like well if she had gotten 10 more minutes of screen time would i have cared um, no i was like no and that, well, that's Rose a... wasn't even a character. They they introduce her as being the bumbling, like awkward, idealistic millennial, exactly like Finn in episode eight. And then the exact scene after that, she's never like that again. <laughs> so I don't even know what her character is. I honestly don't know. She went from being like, oh, my gosh, are you Finn? Which is another weird thing, by the way. Increasingly, the Star Wars movies are existing in a universe where everyone in that universe has also seen Star Wars. <laughs> so when Rose is like geeking out at Finn, it's like, you were in episode seven. She shouldn't know that. Yeah. Nobody should know that. And when like everyone in the universe knows about the original trilogy and Han Solo has to be like, it's true. It's all true. How does anyone know about any of that stuff when apparently the Empire was pretty good about eradicating any sense of the Jedi between episodes three and four? Hmm. Oh, that's man. That's the other thing that, that that blows my mind about like how you choose to spend screen time. So, as as much as I revile episode two, or actually you know love to hate it, whatever, it functionally is at least an entire film dedicated around how somebody can build up an army and no one knows about right, it. Yeah, they spent time on that. So, are like I feel like uh, as a viewer, I'm told that in the universe of Star Wars. You can't just make a galaxy obliterating army without having some kind of like explanation behind it. And, you know, trying trying to dodge spoilers, but that's one of those powers of declaration we're expected to just kind of not along with in episode nine. Yeah. yeah. That there is this threat and it is bigger than anything else. And it just so happens no one's heard about it. But it's there and you just gotta take it. It's it it yeah, I feel like there is definitely a limit to the amount of wild fantasy declarations you can ask an audience to roll with and still be bought into the narrative and this movie far surpassed it i think because it had too much on its plate in terms of trying to get a narrative going which and it's it's too bad because i mean i saw someone say like oh man wouldn't it have been great if this was two movies and i was like uh i guess i mean m maybe i would have been pissed i know that i would have been like fuck i don't want to <laughs> see a, nine part yeah one. i don't want to see episode nine part one and part two like that would have, but, but but it may have created a better movie, um, or it may have created two better movies, I guess. That's so I so I maybe damned if you do, damned if you don't type thing, but it, but that may have helped it, um, and then that way it wasn't cramming two and a half hours of a bunch of shit that like like you said should have happened in in episode eight into nine. Uh, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not sure that I didn't. Yeah, no spoilers for now, chat. I I I don't. I don't. Uh, 
Hmm. I, to your point about Last Jedi, I when I walked out of Last Jedi, I I liked it. I actually was like, that was cool. I liked how they changed a few things, and were like, you know, changing a few expectations. And I was like, this is going to be interesting the way they try and pull this off. Uh, but also to your point, at the end of the movie, there was there were no stakes, so I didn't care whether or not the resistance got away. Um, I didn't care. Uh, <laughs> who where whether rose i mean like did you forget the benicio del toro's in the movie <laughs> like i oh yeah no i i thought like, about that yeah. it's like oh wow that meant nothing that literally and it's funny because he even says his character says that his character says I, this means nothing what what is happening now literally means yeah. nothing because i'm on both sides um, they're trying they're trying to undo i mean again it's it's this thing that i again maybe i'm overreacting to but there is this ryan johnson thing where he tries to be oh so smart and there's something that people who really want you to know they're smart do is they just do the opposite of what you think they're going to yeah. do to prove how smart they yeah. are. And that was so much of episode eight. So sure, yeah, okay, fine. The force, like that scene was interesting because of its implications about the force or the lack thereof or the like the agenda of the force or whether or not the force is predestination, blah, blah, blah. You can read all that into it. But it turns out it, it wasn't anything because it didn't mean anything. You still have to tell a good narrative. Yeah. And there are certain things you can't get away from. You can't just be a contrarian and still tear, tell a good narrative. I was, and that's that's so much of what Episode Eight was. I was just talking to somebody about uh, Empire Strikes Back, and Empire Strikes Back, since it's in the middle, uh, arguably, some people say it has the easiest job. Some people say it has the hardest job. The easiest job because it doesn't have to. Same with Dark Knight. It didn't have to uh, start any new overarching consequences or, or overarching plots or or. Uh, introduce anything that was didn't have to be resolved so these are easiest or hardest however you want to look at it but that's a lot of people say that oh well that's why it's the best is because it doesn't really have to do much i mean i disagree um but empire, and i disagree too yeah yeah because empire empire what it does is it introduces a lot a lot of really large um like i guess re just really really over like overextended consequences for the entire universe that uh that they doesn't resolve, but it's like, okay, so, you know, now Darth Vader is Luke's father. Um, he gets his arm cut off. Uh, uh, he Darth Vader or betrays all of them with the help of Lando, who they had just introduced. Um, Han Solo is in carbonite. Like it's a bunch of different things at the end of the movie. They're like, holy shit, they got to wrap all these things up and return the Jedi. And I can't wait. And what does last Jedi do? What, what, what do they what is what's what do they have at the end of the movie that, that you're like oh I can't, I wonder what's gonna oh. happen? It lectures you about about not trusting in women for a, a good portion of the film. It lectures you about how rich people are evil for a good portion of the film. <laughs> um, I don't know. I felt like the entire movie was talking down to me, um, hmm. and it was it was trying to prove points that were already proven. And I'm like, man, why are we spending time on this? <clears throat> it's not a mistake that like Holdo. <clears throat> excuse me, damn. It's not a mistake that Holdo was always like scowling and frowning and being severe and, and awful. And then once there's this huge turn that she's actually a good character, then all of a sudden she's smiling and stuff. It's meant to make you not like her. Right, like yeah. the entire movie is, is crafted that way. To, so it can pull this great gotcha. Like, oh, don't you feel like an idiot because you thought Poe was cool. It turns out ha Holdo was the cool one, except the entire film was crafted to make you not like her. And then they wag their finger at you for not liking her. It, it's, it's bullshit. Yeah. I don't know. It's... It felt like the entire movie was some dude crossing his arms and like, and like smirking at me. Well, and that's not <laughs> what I go to Star Wars for. Yeah, I know. Last Jedi, I I, uh, I thought it was really neat how they had introduced the fact that Ray didn't have any parents. Their parents were nobody. I thought that was cool. Um, I was excited. Again, about... that's just the opposite of what you think. It, yeah. Well, and, what did it matter? And did it add to her character? Did it introduce conflict to her character? Did it change the texture of her relationship with anyone? No. It was one line. Yeah. I, it was one line of we're going to we're going to do the opposite of what you think we're going to do. <laughs> and it was it was uh, I think they were trying to get the texture between Ray and Kylo. Like basically Kylo was supposed to be, you know, introducing conflict into her character and trying to get her to go to the dark side because she didn't have any parents. Whatever. I don't know. That's a stretch. Um, but yeah, in that case, it should have been like a father figure or something. Um, yeah, maybe I, I'm just spitballing here. But like uh, that's the other thing is I didn't feel an ounce of chemistry between uh kylo and ray <laughs> yeah which yeah. makes episode nine really weird like actually made me uncomfortable but yeah there's just there was there was there was nothing like it doesn't do anything so 
Empire is a really good thing to think back on because they took the time to have interactions between characters that then led to more stakes. So you have, you know, you have Han and Leia on the Falcon and the Falcons run down. And they're hiding yeah, in a cave. Right but they have that moment, you know, where they have chemistry, they have tension. It's there. And then before they can even realize it or even talk about it, or they talk about it right before he gets frozen, they admit their love to each other, but immediately right. he's frozen. Yeah. So tragic. But there's another movie to pay it off. The episode nine tries to have that tragic like Romeo and Juliet moment, and I'm just writhing in my chair because <laughs> none of the none of the homework has been done. Right. That's right. You can't just at the end say they are in love and now this is tragic. Because Thanks, that's Rusty. That's one declaration too far. I needed to actually see it. And and Ray like getting a little sweaty because she sees wide Kylo shirtless. I mean, yeah, I can buy that a little bit, but to compare that to like the the noir-esque romance we saw between Han and Leia in episodes five and six, and there's just no comparison. Um, the only other like thing we have like that is between Anakin and Padme, and that's just weird. Well, it's, yeah, that's which is also what makes episode two so fantastic. Horribly but... executed. Um, and that that was another thing that I think that the the stories were there for the prequels. Uh, like the the skeleton of the story was was interesting and also super weird in, in the sense that there's a lot of government involved and like shit like that um, that you just didn't really necessarily want to know, but you but you found out about Star Wars, um, and the stories just weren't weren't there for every movie for uh, Force Awakens, for Last Jedi, and for now Rise of Skywalker. I I never felt that any one of these movies had a story that I actually was like, oh, that's a cool story. Because because Force Awakens was New Hope, uh, Last Jedi, I don't. What was the story of Last Jedi? <laughs> Do you know? Um, I've I've thought a lot about that, and you're right. There is no punch. I think it's like hope. Is that I don't know. Is that is that the dudes the deeds that you accomplish in your life have an echoing effect that can inspire others to do great things. If I'm being very generous, I think that's kind of the takeaway of Last Jedi, which is not the takeaway you should have from the second act of a trilogy, yeah. but whatever. Yeah. Um, I don't know, man. Space horses, yes. Space horses, well... It, it, was, a, it was a bunch of disparate storylines that all <laughs> seek to, to, to undo a Star Wars trope, which is to say to undo a fairy tale storytelling trope, which, good fucking luck, man. Why, why try? It, uh, I don't know. Rise of Skywalker. I mean, if I were to say Rise of Skywalker story, the story was that the Emperor was back. So that, to me, that's okay. That's an immediate conflict, at least. So you've got yourself a okay. Emperor's back. There's a bad guy in the universe. We kind of know what the Emperor's motive is: is to take over the universe. It always has been. Um, mm -hmm. And that's where I think that this this movie falls apart, actually, because I was excited about the Emperor. I was really excited to find out why the Emperor was back. Uh, what the Emperor was doing different and how they were going to defeat the Emperor. Um, but I think JJ used the Emperor again uh, because, and it, it, maybe even if it was already planned, it may have already been planned long before Rise of Skywalker. But I think JJ used the Emperor because everyone knows what the Emperor wants to do. You don't need to explain what the Emperor wants to do. Even with Snoke, you had to explain what Snoke's motives were because you just assume, yeah, yeah Snoke's like, hey, yeah, sure, he's trying to take over the universe, whatever. But. But I guess why? Like also the actor is just so good. He's great. He's great. He's always that great. dude is. Yeah. Uh, Ian McDiarmid is his name is Ian, oh, uh, yeah McDiarmid. He, he's in my opinion he's uh, he's a standout in everything he is in, in terms of the Emperor. Like I love how crazy and insane he is. And people are always like, oh, it's kind of cringy, <laughs> and I, I think it's fucking great. I think he's I think he's insane. No, it's fantastic. Um, and uh, well, he yeah. he wanted to well, that, and that's what gets weird is yeah, you dive into motivations and stuff. Uh, he didn't want to control the galaxy anymore. He wanted to destroy it. It's, All of it. It seemed like... <laughs> yeah, I guess Which is right. just kind of... It's just mindless escalation. It's like, what's worse than a dictator who wants to rule everything? Somebody wants to blow it all up. And that's... That's it. I mean, maybe maybe there's something more fundamental there. But yeah, I mean... He, the conflict exists because the hero embodies some kind of virtue and the villain embodies some kind of like terrible vice. And then you bang these against each other and then people hear what they want to hear which is that the hero wins right so in this narrative the hero the villain wants to destroy all of existence so yeah the heroes don't need that much motivation <laughs> they don't need to embody anything they just have to need to want to stay alive so i don't know i, I feel like it it really destroys the like dynamic of interesting character conflicts so benny straw is saying 
I think I don't know if you're talking about Rise of Skywalker or Last Jedi, but about the constant fight we have to give into our vices. Just because we succeed once doesn't mean we will be perfect forever. Just because Luke was the hero of Return of the Jedi doesn't mean he would be without failure for the rest of his life. And Kylo wipes out Luke's order, it breaks him. I think Benny Strauss talking about Last Jedi, and I agree mm. with those things. I think that those are interesting conflicts they introduce, but but the movie then concludes it. So introduces the conflict of the fact that Luke, uh, he fucked up. And then at the end of the movie, he's like, oh, well, didn't fuck up. He's fine. And he fixed it all. And I was like, what? Yeah. What? Them turning Luke back into uh, to Mr. Goody Two-Shoes was really aggravating. Because I, I, of all the things last year, I did actually really respected the fact that Luke's path was complicated. Yeah, me too. Um, yeah. I thought, I, of all, yeah, actually, now that I think back about it, Luke's story or the way his his narrative ended up was awesome, actually. And I th- I thought kind of spoke to the kind of ongoing perennial nature of the Force that it. And this is something I've been waiting for Star Wars to tackle, and I'm, I'm it's weird that characters get very close to talking about about this, but never quite. That, um, the Force somehow always uh, it always seeks balance. Yeah. But it keeps raising its own stakes, so it'll make an ultra powerful Sith. People suffer. Then it has to make an ultra powerful Jedi, and they fight each other. And it seems like this is a cycle that just lasts forever. So I what I was hoping is that Luke went into seclusion and like tried to nullify his connection with the Force so that it would not create another Sith to challenge him. He kind of saw the cycle happening. They didn't ever quite say that, even though that is sort of canon in Star Wars. Well, I, think, I think they were the Force works that I, way. I felt like they were getting at that. What you're what you're just but you're right. They didn't ever explicitly say it, but I, I felt like they were getting at that. That he didn't want to like What a cool motivation. Yeah, absolutely. It, yeah. If he's all old and pissed and he's like Fuck the force. Right. I'm tired of this. No, I'm not training you, Ray, because if I train you, it's just going to make Kylo stronger. And you guys are going to fight. And then there's going to be some bullshit with family drama. More people are going to die. Forget it. Like, I kind of wish that where it was going to go. And then now we have an interesting conflict where the Emperor's back. And you got to go to Luke and be like, look, you can ignore this as long as you want. But people are going to die. Well, and thanks you for the just prime. have to do what's right. I feel like there is an interesting narrative of like, maybe don't try to save the world, but just do what's right, right in front of you. Sure. And that's all any human being can do. You can't save the world, but you can save one person. I don't know. But, you know, that didn't work out either. Uh, <laughs> it didn't. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Lay is Lay's asking for mods. I, I noticed I saw, I saw a few spoilers in chat, so try not to. I mean, I guess wow. I guess we can try and talk about them now. Um, yeah, it's been it's been we've been th- at it for what? 30, 30 minutes? minutes yeah, about. Go for it. Um, so. All right, Lawrence, let me ask you this. <laughs> What's the yeah. first thing in this movie you remember being like, what the fuck? Wait, how did that happen? What's the, oh, uh, what's the, so the spoilers, guys, yeah. this is it. Spoilers, spoilers, everybody spoilers. Here they come. Here they come. Okay, real spoiler time. Yeah. I mean, I think I think it's pretty definite when a physical object transferred locations through the force. Okay, yeah. Whenever, the, like, Dan Law, the, the, the necklace price. got snatched. Price pay the I port. thought that was like, oh, oh okay, that's... Oh boy, if we start getting into that, that's some real shit, man. If you can start teleporting physical shit just by being force connected with somebody enough. Mm. So yeah, so that's that's the you're referring to which I didn't even know was they say in the movie, but they call it force dyad, um, which is apparently a connection between Ray and Kylo. And mm-hmm. I guess the Emperor mentions the Force Dyad and says, like, you guys have this force dyad. Uh right. be careful. They're so paired for some reason. They never get into the reason. There actually is no reason that I can think of. Uh, so you... what I assume the reason is, and I don't know if the, this made the movie explicitly tells you this, but I think it's because uh, of the balance. So I think the reason they're, they are, have that diet is because of the balance. Um, okay. So what like what predicated the imbalance? Because Ray didn't do anything. Ben was the one who trained. So because Ben became so powerful on the dark side, why? I don't know. So this is interesting. Austin says, I think, I, I think line? Snoke did it. Yeah. And see, this is the thing is that like people, so Snoke says he, he does it in last shot. He said, he's like, yeah, I did that to you. I, I connected you guys. And so are we saying that then through Snoke, the emperor did it connected them? Uh, uh let's see here. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, there's, there's some good suggestions in chat here. Sure. Um, I, so I think what it is, if I'm if I'm being honest, to me it feels it feels real Twilight. Um, hmm. So there there is a fan community, the Raylos out there, and I think the most so the most romantic thing you can do 
is say that like you guys are bonded in some spiritual plane. Thanks, Peer Gamer. It's it's the idea of a soulmate, basically. Um, and to tie that to like Star Wars canon is a pretty powerful sentiment. Like, oh, you guys have been bonded since birth and you just didn't know it. But your souls are connected. The way you talk to each other and understand each other. Yes, it's so deep. Uh, I kind of get the sentiment behind it. It's just not justified by any of the story until just now. So that's an awfully heavy thing to try and inject about two characters' connections that hasn't been alluded to or mentioned. I mean, I guess Last Jedi had some of it with the fact that they would just spontaneously be, like, connected to each other. But, bleh. And also, how come there haven't been... I guess you could argue there were shades of that in previous generations? That for every light and dark side, they did have a connection and could sort of sense and talk to each other? But there was never anything like this from what we saw in, yeah. in Rise of Skywalker. And like you said, like, uh, objects getting teleported across great distances in between their physical spaces. Which, by the way, and at this point in the film, I think, it's probably about halfway through, maybe a little less, I, I was okay with. I was like, fine, no problem. Uh, I'm good with all of this. This is no problem to me. Um, I, 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 at this point, and, and I'll sort of describe my progression in Rise of Skywalker. At this point in the movie, I was like, that's a lot for the Force, but okay. I'm good with this. <laughs> and then by the end of the film, I'm like, it's fucking Harry Potter. Like, this has turned into... It's yep. all magic all the time. And that bugged me because I never felt like the Force was magic. You feel like the Force is sort of like a... Kind of like a God being or an you know an all-knowing conscience or something like that. Um, that occasionally people can tap into. But this the end of the film makes it feel like it's just Harry Potter now. It's just all magic. Uh, and maybe they had to do that because they had to up the stakes for the force in, in this. Maybe that was the point um, was because like, well, they, we have to show them a whole bunch of shit they've never seen before. Um, do you, I don't know. Do you think, I, what do you think about that? I think they had to put something non-concrete in there to give people headspace to invent their own conclusions because the movie didn't have enough to work with. Um, I think that's yeah. like if I'm coming at it from like a story crafting perspective, then there's legitimately not enough material to bank off of in episode seven and eight to make any kind of conclusion between Ray and Kylo interesting. So I'll throw it to the magic hole. Like, I'll just be like, here's the thing here's magic. They've been connected this whole time. There you go. And you guys can figure it out from there. Yeah. Just like just make it generic enough and unexplained enough. Because if you actually try to go in there and write something, first of all, you don't have the, the runtime to justify anything. And if you just throw it to the magic hole, it, like, the audience can do a lot of the work for you if you do your job right. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't know. In, in my ultimate cynicism, that's how I read it, is that they had no shot of actually executing any kind of interesting conclusion between those two characters. So they just had to, to say a wizard did it. <laughs> and that's exactly what I mean, like, it's at the end of the movie, that's exactly what happens. Like, they're basically like... The Emperor's like, I am the wizard and I did it. And that's the other thing that, that gets me is like the so the big deal about episode six was that Luke realized that, you know, if he gave in to his passions and res, like resorted to anger, he might he might win the day now, but it'll put him on a path towards the dark side or whatever. Ray, like her encounter with the Emperor was not nearly so cathartic, I don't think. It's like hmm. I, yet, I mean, she still killed him. Um, if we're in full spoiler territory, she just did it with two lightsabers instead of one. Well, this is, by the way, this is uh, just to bring up really quick another plot hole by the end of the movie where I'm like literally throwing my hands up. Uh, was when she kills him, before before she kills him, the Emperor explicitly tells Rey, if you kill me, I will be absorbed into you. And I was like, all right, how are they going to get around that? And so then she ends up killing him, but that but then he doesn't get absorbed into her. What the fuck? Like what can you tell me why that happened? Do you know why? Uh so I, I've been thinking a lot about that. And and I'm especially frustrated because you would think, based on the things we've been talking about with the force, that Emperor Palpatine or Darth Sidious would know things about the balance. He's seen this happen multiple generations. Well, that's true, yeah. Uh so all I can assume is that Darth Sidious is saying, like, if I disappear, there will be a new Sith. That's just how the Force works. And it's going to be you, because you're the most powerful one. Hmm. 
that's all I could figure is what that meant. It's like people are saying it was his. Force is going to turn somebody evil. <laughs> the people are saying it, it was his own lightning. I, I, oh yeah, yo, I know. It's the it's like the episode three thing too. But that. <sighs> oh, he destroyed himself with his own. What? How, that could have worked. <sighs> That's so dumb. But that, that, that's so dumb. That doesn't make any sense. I get it. I, but also that, ha by the way, that happens at the return of the in, in, at the end of Return of the Jedi too. He hits himself uh, with yeah. his own lightning. Regardless, um, uh, he's done that so much. <laughs> he should be. Why hasn't he learned? Uh, yeah, just stop shocking when it's getting reflected. I, Whatever. Yeah, but and, and so like so when she when she reflects back that lightning and and I know what you're saying. I do. I, I understand what you're saying. I appreciate you saying that it's his own lightning because I that's what that was the first thing I thought too. I was like, all right, fine, it's his yeah. own lightning. Okay, sure. Whatever. But to me, he made a very explicit statement of, if I die, I will go into you. And when he says that, he's basically like, if you hit me with your lightsaber, I'm going to go straight into you. And then it doesn't matter. We're going to continue the cycle. Um, and I don't know. I don't know. I, that was that was too much for me. <laughs> so I think, I think also uh, someone in, in chat here, the best Adam, has a good point. I think it has a lot to do with your motivations for what you're doing. So if you kill someone in anger, that's different than stoically, dispassionately, sure, logically. Like, you know, if you're if you're throwing if you're throwing a raccoon out of your house, that's different than bashing it with a rock because you want to kill it. Right. So, I guess and and Jedi kill like Jedi don't they don't always uh, find a way to not kill. So there are ways I think within Star Wars canon to be on the light side but also take a life. And and I guess that's what they're getting at is. Maybe Sidious was saying in that moment, but why would he say that? Wouldn't he want that? Well, uh, and by the way, he's giving that away. That doesn't make any sense if he's like, now if you hit me with your lightsaber and you're angry, I'm going to go into yeah. you. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Like, he's like literally explaining what not to do. That, to me, that doesn't make any sense. Um, and so, Also, if he understands the balance, then he knows that if there's, if, there's a, if there's a powerful Jedi still on the planet, then the Sith is going... Like, a, by Star Wars canon, within 15 years, there's going to be a super powerful Sith born on some ass-backward planet in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> I, I don't... Uh, yeah, this is... I mean, uh, and we're, we're just going down the rabbit hole of a plot, because, mm -hmm. I mean, like, I, I was thinking... Uh, let's see here. Well, I mean, these are just minor plot holes, but, like, the, there's one where when Rey hits uh, the ship that supposedly Chewie is in, and she hits it with lightning oh. and it explodes... I was like, holy shit, the movie killed Chewie. I was like, that is really cool. I was like, yeah, in like a, a pretty igno ignominious way of just like, yeah. hey, he's dead now. And I was like, whoa, okay, that's a beat. I was, All right. I was that like, was pretty that was, courageous. It was cool. And then they were like, oh, no, no, there was another ship you didn't see. And I was like, what? Like, oh, my God. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> that's what Jeru was. It. I was I was already sort of uninvested at the film at that point, but Thanks, they were like, David no, Can't film you face, were sad for no reason. I was like, well, now I'm not ever going to be sad again. Yeah. Yeah. You can't pull that trick on the audience. It's, yeah. <laughs> that ship was there. Okay. Apparently it was there in the film, but... Was it? Jesus Christ. I guess. I don't know. That's that's what chat's saying. And, and I believe him. I've only seen it once. I don't know that I ever ever want to watch it again. Maybe I will. I, I, I saw it once and I had, I had uh, tickets for Thursday and Friday night to go see it. I think a total of three times. And I plan on at least seeing it one other time. And I canceled all of my... All of my oh wow screenings because I was like I don't want to watch this movie again and honestly I was sort of I was sort of embarrassed to see it with Autumn because Autumn was going to come with me and I was like I don't know that I don't know that you can want to you're going to want to watch this um and it, it made me sad <laughs> it made me really sad because uh, I love I really love like I'll see I saw Last Jedi back to back I saw it two times in a row um, same with Force Awakens. Same with Endgame too. So, so like I'm kind of down to see whatever. It doesn't matter how bad or good it is. I usually will watch it back to back to back. But this was just like, oh boy, I don't know if I can do this anything anymore. Um, okay, sure, the ship is there. Great. Uh, so then, it's still a dumb trick. Even if, even if there are two ships, even if they like copy and pasted a ship into the background, <laughs> that's still dumb as hell. That is dumb as fuck. Yeah. Like there, there's. I don't think any living person can look at that and be like, mm, yes, writing masterstroke. Yeah. <laughs> like that whole like character you love is dead. No, they're not. Yeah. That's just that's stupid. So, that's, uh. so Bones texted me. Uh, mm. He texted me a bunch of like because he was like, I didn't like it because everybody I've talked to doesn't like it. Everyone, every single person I've talked to doesn't like doesn't like this movie. And he was like, basically he he recited all the things that happened in the movie where somebody comes back to life. Uh, like say with 3PO where they're like we gotta wipe his memory he's oh. back 
Uh, Chewie's dead. He's back. Uh, He's back. And then uh, Ray, di who dies? Does Ray die? Who dies? Uh, ben, uh, Kylo dies. Kylo dies. He's, He's back. He's back. Then he dies again. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and uh, to me, you know, the Force could do that. Hole's gone. Uh, and to me, I was like, okay, maybe JJ is going for resurrection as a theme. Maybe that's what it is. Now, the problem with resurrection as a theme is if you use it seven times or however many times it was used in one movie, then eventually it doesn't matter anymore. Um, you can usually you get one. <laughs> usually you get the yeah. you get the one. They come back from the dead and that's it. That's all you get. Uh, and honestly, the emperor was the first resurrection that I was like, sure. OK, the emperor has been resurrected. Fine. But then they're like, everybody else keeps getting resurrected over and over and over. And I was just like, what the fuck? Like, oh, yeah, it doesn't matter anymore. Right? No one, no one's at stake. Nothing's at stake. And I, this is coming from somebody who loves Marvel films where nobody, yeah. nobody's lives were ever at stake in those movies. And except for maybe in, in Infinity War and Endgame, when I thought for sure they're going to kill characters, and they did. But in, in Star Wars, I didn't think for a second any one of them was going to die. Um, and that made me, that also made me sad because... This movie is being marketed as the wrap-up to nine films, 40 years of movies. And I was like, well, they're going to kill some characters, right? <laughs> like, they got to. That, that has to happen. And who, do they, they, kill, they kill Kylo, right? That's it. Yeah. That's all. Oh, he gave his own life. So he didn't, he didn't die to circumstances outside of his control, which is more tragic and harder for audiences to digest, I think. That's true. Uh, but yeah, Kylo and Leia, I think, are the only ones who actually, for real, maybe passed away. Except <laughs> Leia evaporated, so she's a ghost. She's a ghost, yeah. You know? She's a ghost. I'm trying to think of actual humans that are really dead. But like, but Luke, and you can't Luke's, ever see Luke's a ghost, and he's fine. Yoda's a ghost, and he's fine. Like, those are Force ghosts are, in my opinion, sort of not part of these rules because they always come back, right? Whatever, fine. I mean, and Kylo faded away, too, so he's also a ghost. He turned, it, he turned Jedi at the last second. It's like switching, switching to Christianity as you're dying. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It is. He got in. He got in. Uh, Hux died, but nobody cared. Um, oh, man. Hux was awesome. Uh, like, of, of all the yeah. shitty, like, side characters that actually had a great arc, Hux was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, they did so much with the two scenes they got with him. I, it, it, like, it fit his character so great for him to be that spiteful about Kylo. I thought that that's motivating his entire character. That was brilliant. It's the one thing that fixed that like fit so perfectly weird weird ah. weirdly that that character arc i i saw i when that happened in the movie yeah. i looked back and went hey that's right those things happened in those other two movies <laughs> and i it, it was a nice little arc for hux um not that i cared but it was but it was <laughs> but at least it was a character arc and i was like right that makes huh? sense he went from this to this um i no other characters had those well-defined lines <laughs> that hux did sadly um and like people are saying, also, like Han Solo, oh, Han Solo died, but I, he shows up again as a memory, not even as a force ghost yeah, or whatever. What was that all about? What was that all about? Man, that's something. <laughs> uh, also, I guess the implication is that because because Kylo, I, I don't know, because his mom brought him some cookies, some spirit cookies <laughs> that he suddenly became good. Yeah. I don't get it. Or, or that he had to see somebody sacrifice for him. As a, uh, so I was thinking about this about Kylo Stakes because up until Episode Nine, he actually doesn't hasn't done anything super awful. He didn't open fire on his mom in Episode Eight. He didn't really kill anyone in Episode Seven either. Well, I think he was He's, he was the one that I guess I mean him and Hux ordered the attack um, from Star Killer. So they okay. They ordered they that annihilated a, a planet. Yeah, but but you're, but like it doesn't. The movie doesn't do a good job of being like, Kylo Ren did this, you know, like yeah. They they he's not as like, Vader in Episode Four is with his bare hands snapping a dude's neck. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like while he's holding him, that that's a villain. Uh, Kylo like he has he has angry white boy teenage fits. He breaks computers, he force chokes people, but he never like brutally in cold blood killed people the way Vader did. So going into episode nine, I was like, okay, what are they going to do with Kylo? And they do something pretty cool right off the top. They they show him massacring people because he's so angry yeah. and pissed and like full Sith. I'm like, okay, good. We got it. Uh, and then for them to do a redemption arc on him was, I didn't want them to. Man, I didn't. I knew they were going to, but I didn't want it. I, I didn't either. And even the way it played out was really Sad what Star Wars has yeah. turned to Just the main like, story. Because like, hey, I liked remember? Force Awakens. Like, <gasps> 
I do but remember. Then you have the likes it. of Fallen yep. Order I, I and the Mandalorian, which are on a different level. It was so level. weird to me because, I mean, some for people SW, are saying, like, Kylo killed Han Solo, which is true. Also, here is my financial uh, contribution Kylo for shot, a good talk. Kylo um, shot Leia and, uh, like, shot Leia in, when she was in the bridge of that ship. So, like, he was trying to kill his parents. Well, no, Kylo didn't do that. Didn't he fire it? Uh, no, his, like, his thumb was over the trigger and then another ship shot. Oh really? I'm pretty oh, sure that I'm pretty sure that's how that scene went down. Holy which shit! Which also made me, which also gave even less interest to Kylo's character, because yeah, he he had already killed his dad, but here he is in Episode Eight, hesitating to open fire on Leia. <laughs> he, uh, that's right. Yeah, people are saying he. I hesitated. could be wrong about that. No, no, people are saying. I think I remember. Yeah, they're, they're confirming he hesitated. Um, yeah, he didn't shoot, um, and which implies that he cares more about his mom than his dad. Okay, we're going into Greek storytelling again. We're in a fairy tale. It makes sense. So Butter King says. Um, Kylo killed Luke's entire Jedi Order with the help of the Knights of Ren. Do they show that? They show that. In they show. There's that one shot in Episode Seven of the Knights of Ren. But they and it, it they definitely implies that he did all that. But they they don't actually show him slaughtering things, right? Like like slaughtering people and in in Force Awakens. Did they show him with, with the Knights of Ren? I don't. I, no. I don't think the, they... knight, the Knights are not. The Knights are not even in films until Episode Nine, yeah, and even then they're in one shot. <laughs> They don't show up again. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Why are they in the film? I, I, I don't know. A lot of people are at, like, that's another major plot hole. Is those, the Knights of Ren are, li they literally do nothing except fight Kylo at the end. <laughs> they fight the guy that they are apparently pledged to. Um, also, why were there gangs of Sith in that arena at the end? Because I thought the Sith Order was not like that. Wouldn't they all be trying to kill each other all the time? Yes. I mean, like, from what I understand of the Sith, they submit to their master until they become strong enough to kill them. Mm. So, like, they're basically, like, they, like, start, you know, Darth Maul. He serves Sidious until, whatever, until he is strong enough to kill him. But that's why Darth Maul, even though he's so powerful, he serves Sidious, whatever. I don't, but I, the Sith, in my opinion, Sith rules are fucking out the window now when it comes to these movies. <laughs> like, it doesn't, there are no rules anymore. It doesn't matter. Um, yeah. And and that's a lot. A lot of people were asking when we were talking about Palpatine, like how the fuck did Palpatine survive the blowing up of the Death Star and like getting thrown down the center of the fucking reactor? How I feel like it makes slightly more sense once you see Leia in the vacuum of space, like yeah. navigating. Yeah. I mean, not that that makes it better. No, that's true. But at least there's a little more soil in the Earth for those roots to take hold. Yeah. What honestly, what bugs me more, and I, I alluded to this earlier, is how did he, how did he build a fleet? of Star Destroyers, each of which equipped with a Death Star cannon. <laughs> 200 of them. And no one knew. The, no one knew. This this is, so in my opinion, this is the biggest flaw of the entire movie. Which is, not only is Palpatine alive. I'm okay with this. Fine. Like, I'll tick it off. Fine. No problem. Palpatine's alive. He's hooked up to life support. Totally fine. He's got a few Sith monkeys, literal monkeys. Uh, <laughs> they're helping him. Check it off, fine. We're good. No problem. Uh, but he's like, oh, yeah, by the way, I have endless amounts of Star Destroyers with <laughs> endless amounts of planet killers lasers. And we never once, I don't think we ever once see the inside of one of these Star Destroyers. Not once. So I have no idea who's piloting them. I have no idea who's, who has, like, is he controlling all of them? No. I mean, it seemed like at some point Kylo merged the First Order with Darth Sidious's fleet. So that's theoretically where all the people would come from. But I don't understand. Yeah, I don't understand how Darth Sidious, with 200 dudes in robes, built an entire galactic fleet of ships with no one to pilot them. Yeah, his, <laughs> I guess he sees the future. I mean, so they do, they do kind of see it in Episode 3 that Darth Sidious... Darth Sidious's relationship with death is complicated, or that he has found a way to not we die do. Yeah, ever. That's true. That's true. So in that way, also, and this is what gets stupid, is then Darth Sidious is just the embodiment of evil. Well, he does. He's not a character anymore. He doesn't need motivation. He's just evil, and that's fine. But they don't actually say that. You're just kind of left to think that. Um, and then that also makes the conflict get weird because if if he is just the embodiment of evil. Then, then are we led to believe that the universe and the force conspire to empower him to constantly reinvigorate this conflict between <laughs> right, good and evil? Right, right, 
That's I mean, good. maybe, maybe that's it. And and in that case, fine. Then it's then it's even further down the fantasy hole than I thought it was. But <laughs> that's where we are. But that makes it impossible to buy into any of the human drama around it. That's right. And it is just like, yeah, it is somebody sitting at their desk with their action figures, just smashing them together. They, well, so people are saying, and this is, I knew this, by the way, people are saying, well, yeah, there's the, the first order takes control of all of these star destroyers. That's fine. Yeah. And, and, and yeah, no, I remember that. There's an antenna that controls all the star destroyers, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> but apparently star destroyers, just knowing something about the star Wars universe, star destroyers has, hundreds sometimes thousands of people in each and they're all autopiloted by the one antenna that's what i'm supposed to believe uh no there were multiple antenna because they almost shot the one and then they were like move it to the other they move, it to, move it to the other ship then they blew the other ship and then they found the other antenna and, and they shot it and they shot it um oh boy so there was nobody on those star destroyers nobody fine fine i didn't i didn't buy it when i was in the theater but apparently that's what you guys are telling me so I'm good with that. We'll we'll move on. Uh, you tell me who the thousands of people were in the stands. Who were the chanting people in <laughs> in uh, the the base of Exegol? Who were those people? Again, not once did we see their faces. Not once. Uh, and a lot of people are saying, were they real? They were definitely real. The reason they were real because they show rocks hit them. So they show ro rocks sure. kill them, meaning like, oh, we have to kill the cult. Because like, I was thinking to myself, oh, there's thousands of Sith, whatever, Sith cult. Uh, if the Emperor dies, who cares, right? Then there's going to be these other thousands of people that are, they pledge themselves to the Sith. And nobody, and then they show rocks kill them. So I'm like, okay, well, then they're gone too. Who were they? Uh, they were clones. Also, of, they were clones of Snoke, somebody says. They never say that. What? They never say that no, or also, they never show it. Yeah, Snoke had a different, like, Snoke was bigger. They showed the tank of the Snoke clones, which I thought was a really cool little opt-in. Which I appreciated. Um, yeah, which I appreciate. Yeah. That's something, at least. It's like, it, you know what? That's the one thing that wasn't said out loud to you as an audience viewer in that entire movie. You're right. <laughs> that, yeah. hey, clone, Snoke was a clone. Hey, there it is. Turns out you can use environmental storytelling as well as you can use dialogue spoken directly to the camera. Um, the other thing that gets me is, is the second, the absolute second, they say, hey, we're going to send uh, Lando off to find help in the galaxy. I'm like, God damn it. That's how this movie's going to end. He's he's going to he's going to crest the hill as the sun rises. Yep. Old Gandalf on his ship. He's going to bring in <laughs> hundreds of other people because people do care. It's going to be the takeaway. God damn it. And yeah, it happened. I don't know. It's it's just such a bummer to have the ending telegraphed to you so hard. Well, they had to they had to put a line in justifying it. So this is so. Lawrence. You bring up another excellent point. They say some, and like it was either a throwaway, it was Lando or it was, I forget who it was, Lando, Poe, Pin, or uh, Pin, Pin, uh, Finn, <laughs> Finn or Poe was like, we're going to go to the, we're going to go to the core and we're going to go talk to people and don't worry, they're coming. And somebody, there's even another throwaway line that somebody says like, are you sure about that? <laughs> and because I think it's like Poe or somebody says like, I don't know if they're going to come. Yeah. And somebody else goes, no, they will come. You must believe. And I was like, yeah. oh, geez, oh, geez. Yeah, they're coming. And so when they show up, I visibly cringe like I did yeah. in Spider-Man when all of New York held Spider-Man. And, <laughs> and I was like, I was like, please don't like don't try to make this Dunkirk or like some <laughs> like, you know, like some amazing uh, like bastion of humanity that they've all decided to go. <sighs> and they did. And they didn't really show yep. anybody in the ships. They didn't like. They obviously they show fighter pilots and stuff, but they didn't, they weren't like, oh, like there's yeah. this like you know what would be really neat would be kind of fun if they had shown the Mandalorian, if they had shown somebody from Rogue One, if they had shown like characters from the outlying universe. That would have been fun. Um, and or, or they at least follow Lando. And I know there's no room for this in the film, so I get it. But like, follow Lando. Show him trying to convince people and be like, yes, nah. Yes, yeah. I, although I understand that that would be rough because he has to be like, no, you don't get it. We have a secret map that's in a, a triangle and we decoded it. And now we know where the bad guys are. And they all have ships that have laser guns on them. But if we shoot an antenna, we'll be fine. And then people are looking at him like he's insane. <laughs> are you crazy? Movie is insane. <laughs> yeah, I know. So, yeah, I, I get that, like, they needed to show it. But also, if they showed it, it would have revealed how stupid the movie is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then I don't know, like... <laughs> Why was everyone cool until just then? Like, everyone seemed cool with the First Order. And then Lando goes around and says, hey, it's me, Lando. Let's do this. And everybody's like, yeah, you know what? It's, now's the time. 
I wasn't feeling it the last 40 years, but something about you right now <laughs> makes me think this is how, how, do, how we do it. Uh, uh, Ibubek said, why did all the ships arrive at once? <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, here's, here's another like minor plot hole that I threw away when I was watching it. Someone tell me the answer to this, because I don't think you can. This is one of those ones that are unanswerable. Uh, they show Kylo, and then they show, I think it's Ray. both go through this sort of, like, amalgamation of, uh, like, nebula and machinery to get to Exegol. Because there's the, you know, the, those, those Sith artifacts basically, like, plot the course to Exegol. And it's, like, basically room for one little ship gets through. Do you remember that, Lawrence? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Okay. I don't. So, I don't remember specifically like the room for one ship, well, but I do remember the. They show them like just very briefly go through like little red nebula, basically, and I was like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. How did all the other ships go through it? How do they all jump in at the same time right over Exegol? If there was some map that they had to find for the entire movie that could only allow one ship through at one time, like. So the the throwaway line was that. I, the first person going in was transmitting their coordinates, so they were showing everyone else how to do it. So they could just jump through uh, the nebula then. I mean, I guess I don't know how I don't know the intricacies of hyperspace, <laughs> but yes, potentially if I guess if they broadcast the location on the other side of the nebula, that everybody could just jump straight there. Just jump straight there. All right, yeah, great. Ah, sure. Let's, I don't know, man. Let's do it. I don't want to make any excuses for this movie. Let's do it. I'm in. I'm in. Uh, somebody also put in to my chat that each star destroyer has forty six thousand crew members. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I knew they had a fuck ton. And so that's why I was like, they're all autopilot? Like, what? Um, and I, fine, whatever. <laughs> no problem. Uh, yeah, I, I, that, I mean, I think we're hitting on the core issue of the film. Thanks for doing that, Which is that, that Haley, it asks Brian. you to take so much on faith. Anderson Phoenix. That about an hour in, your Just faith nice is And also, the conclusion of a trilogy, you should be done taking in new things. Or new rules. That should be the first act. The first act is establishing the universe and declaring everything. You know, there is a there is a princess on top of a tower, and there is a warrior with a sword, and he's got to save her. All right, Declare, declaration's done. Now we can get to the story. But when episode nine, when they when you're at the end of the story, and they have to keep telling you new rules about how everything's working, that's very bad. <laughs> um, and that means that yeah, there's there's no room for you to get latched onto any character or any drama because the rules keep shifting under your feet. Well, there was the, there's a thing that a lot of these articles are asking, and I think this is what you feel when you watch the movie, which is Palpatine is talking to Kylo most of the movie, and he's like, hey, go get her. Hey, kill her. Uh, hey, bring her to me. Um, he Then they arrive. He doesn't. He gets killed by the Emperor. I mean, well, not killed, but tossed off into that hole. And then she's there, and he's like, okay, now strike me down. Now don't strike me down. Now... Uh, never mind. I'll do it without you. <laughs> and you're like, what? <laughs> what the fuck? Like he's done. There's like literally 12 turns that the emperor has done. And generally the emperor is supposed to be the one that has the plan. He's the one that's like, oh yeah. Like I know exactly what's going to happen if this and this, but he doesn't at some point he's just like, fuck it. I'll do it myself. <laughs> and you're like, well, then what did he need Ray for? Uh, that's, or what did he need Kylo for? That's, that was the thing that, it was a, there was a lot of bouncing back and forth that really confused me and I think confused a lot of other people because I, I read that in, in a lot of other articles. They were like, well, why was he saying this? Why did he tell her to do this? But then not that. Why did he tell him to kill her but then not kill her? And then bring him back and uh, whatever. I'm not sure if that yeah. bothered you at all. It, it did because because uh, I I felt a similar level of eye roll. I, not, not that I'm remotely as bought into James Bond, but inspector when Blofeld's like it was me i did it all i'm like yeah whatever okay oh yeah yeah uh kind of same vibes which i feel like also discredited a lot of how clever i mean you talked about the polit political angle of the prequels you're right uh the skeleton of the story was actually really good and and reflecting on the prequels that's the thing i like the most it's actually the fact that it told you indirectly the story of how the emperor took over the galaxy it turns out it was really complicated and really hard he had to do a lot of scheming a lot of maneuvering, a lot of manipulation. Yeah. And then I feel like episode nine tried to pull that trick again by saying, ha ha, I was pulling the strings the whole time. But that doesn't work if you're retconning everything. Episodes one, two, and three were kind of written knowing what the Emperor did, and they reveal it in bits and pieces, which is super cool. Um, but man, for episode nine to be like, oh, no, wait, the Emperor did it all. But why? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it always comes back to why and how. Um, and the conflict... And, and this is what conflict is supposed to be. It's 
supposed to be like a clash of will. The emperor wants to do something and the heroes want to stop him from doing mm -hmm. it. But yeah, what based on the conversations they have and the motivations the emperor have, we have no idea <laughs> what his actual motivation was. I, I, don't, uh, I don't know. I don't know. He wanted to go blow up all the planets. I, I get. I mean, I like you said. I think at the beginning of this, you're like, before it was that he wanted to control everything and basically run the run the empire, but now he wants to blow it all up, and just like he wants to just the Sith to rule. Yeah, I mean, there was that right. what, uh, like the was it Project Inferno or something like that? The thing that Battlefront's campaign was about. Supposedly, after he died, he left uh, orders to the Imperial Army to raise republic planets just like actually destroy full planets because operation cinder that was it thank you thank you chat um so i feel like it it theoretically is in his in his like character if i can't rule it then i want to destroy it except he was still there and theoretically pretty close to ruling the galaxy again so i don't i don't i don't get it it does it <laughs> The, the, the coolest thing is when you think back on something and you discover that it was actually, it added up way better than you thought it did. And uh, a lot of the original trilogy is like that. You can go back to those films and think, wow, actually that makes a ton of sense. Uh, I, I just rewatched Empire and I was like, wow, there's so much about that movie that makes a lot of sense that they don't have to tell you. Yeah. So yeah. the fact that the rebellion is hiding on a snowy planet out in the middle of nowhere and that the Empire discovers them because they're shooting probe droids all over the, all over the galaxy. Like those events happen but there's no one that turns to the camera and says, hey, why are we on Hoth anyway? And then someone says, well, it's a secluded planet. It's covered with ice. So <laughs> no one thinks the yeah. Yeah. That's an episode nine conversation because I guess the movie's moving too fast that they don't believe that you could follow any of this stuff. But yeah, the way that, that Empire, and I, I've been reflecting a lot on Empire because Last Jedi was such a failure. Um, it does so much in, in like establishing stake and characters and motivations and fleshing out the world that ha just hasn't been touched on since. Mostly because I feel like people don't think there's any room in films for it. Hmm. Which is partially why I think people like The Mandalorian so much. Because it actually can take room and breathe and talk and establish character. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, the, the slap, slap on face was saying that, like, it seemed like Palpatine wanted to make Rey the, the new leader but then failed. So then he decided to take Kylo and her life force. To, yeah, it's an on-the-spot decision. I, that's not, in my opinion, that's like weird writing i mean like it's not even really bad writing it's just weird i don't know why they worked so hard for like why the movie worked so hard for them to get together other than the fact that they got together and kissed <laughs> you know i like, hated that yeah i mean everybody did god i hated that that was like brother and sister kissing yeah and uh, i know and that's not uncommon for star wars of course but uh man <laughs> i can't imagine someone who was excited to see that happen yeah in the theater oh it felt so weird it was really weird because i was like oh they're not gonna kiss like they're gonna hug and i was i was praying so hard in the theater please don't let them they're going in no 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 yeah. like i was <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I was i thought for sure they're just gonna hug because like normally they're fighting right they're always fighting and like yelling at each other and stuff with that connection but this time they'll they'll be together and hug and then they yeah. kissed and I was like, what the fuck? Like, wait a minute. They like each other? They're sexually attracted to each other? Uh, it blew my mind. Uh, I didn't really so, didn't expect it at all. The only thing... Uh, yeah, I didn't want to. The, the only <laughs> thing, based on some of the things they said, I thought it was coming, is I don't think it's even sexual. I think, I think their relationship is supposed to be, like, even transcendent beyond that. I think it's supposed to be, like, soulmate territory. They were bonded through the Force. Okay. So they are basically connected in a spiritual way. Um, so in a way, if you wanted to be very generous, you could argue it was a non-sexual kiss, that it was just like a, an evolution of embrace, but that's, that gets Mark, into weird true. territory when like, I mean, you kiss, like, there's no way to take the sexuality out of a kiss, right? No. Cause that's something that's reserved for people who are sexually attracted I mean, to each kiss other. Kiss on the mouth, like the way they kiss? No, that's, that's sexually attracted. Like they were. Yeah. You don't do that to your mom. You don't do that to your sister. <laughs> <laughs> so again Thanks, what are we factor. Thanks for the prime too. What are we what are we doing here? <laughs> what are, what am I supposed to think about that? I, I don't I don't I don't know that anybody thought that, that was good. I, I haven't seen anybody I mean like and again by the end of the movie I was just sort of I had my hands in the air and I was like so oh, yeah sure they kiss you got it. And and then when the, I mean like even also when the emperor is like sucking their life force out I was like this is Harry Potter. I said this turned in mm -hmm. this turned into Harry Potter. 
Because why didn't he just do that in the first place? Why wasn't he just using other people? He does. All right. There's the throwaway line where he says, well, well you guys are so strong that this makes me feel great. <laughs> so because why was he not just sucking the life force out of everybody around him? You know, like, yeah, I guess they didn't weren't force empowered. I guess. Uh. Yeah, that, that he does. That is OK. Sure. The emperor explains that with one line with a throwaway line being like, you guys are so powerful that it makes me feel great. <laughs> so fine. Um, but, and then when she brings him back to life and then he brings her back to life, I was, the healing thing, by the way, force healing is no big deal. Uh, I, it's been in video games. It's been in other like books and a lot of other shit. So it never bothered me. Uh, also it's in Mandalorian. So it was, yeah. it was a thing that I, that really didn't bother me at all. Force healing is totally fine. Um, so I thought it was cool that they put that, they, if I, they finally showed it in a movie. I thought that was neat. Um, but the resurrection thing, that's new. That's a new thing. And we're bordering on like the matrix territory where at the end of, uh, I think it's reloaded when, she, when he brings back Trinity. Yeah. And I was like, ooh, ooh, you know, like well, you cock your head to the side and go, what? Oh, all right. I didn't know that was the thing. I mean, that even still, that even still, they tried to visually explain that in a way that still made sense within Thanks, the Mark context C's. of the film. Brynjar Bjorn. But still, it still takes the graphic a walk too. out on the limb. But yeah, he pulled the bullet out and then he like cyber massaged her heart or in digi space so that her real heart would start beating again. Like, okay, that's a stretch. And, and to that degree, yeah, it is, it is okay. The force can do this now. So it is new in that regard, but, uh, I don't know. At, at least, at least the mechanics of that made sense to me. And this, this is much more ethereal and Harry Potter esque, where it is like, yeah, I just, I pushed my life force into you, and now you're alive again. <laughs> um, man, I, and the funny thing is too, I, 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 on a writing level, I respect the like Romeo and Juliet aspect of yeah, it. Yeah, me too. Of like, we have our time, and now it's over. Ah, it's so tragic. Yeah. Except that you know, kind of like I said before, you didn't put any coins in the bank. No. Not, so when you go to when you go to withdraw them, there's nothing there. No, it didn't matter. Yeah, it didn't, and that was my yeah. that was my problem with the whole movie. Uh, G Mart said, "Force resurrection undermines Anakin's entire arc." That's a great point. Oh, because he could have saved his mom. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, I mean, theoretically, he wasn't powerful enough in the Force, and then Sidious knew that and withheld that information from him. Yeah, I I, I agree, but I, I also think you could, if you wanted to be generous, you could make arguments within the canon of Star Wars about why that turned out the way it did. Well, he could have brought back Padme too. And yeah, well, obviously Sidious didn't want him to know that he could have done that, uh, and Sidious probably prevented that from happening. I mean, there are there are like what are, there are uh, the theories that Sidious actually like force choked Padme to death after she gave birth, Thanks, or while she was giving birth, or whatever. Yeah, that's what I thought. I always assumed that that was the like basically he accidentally killed her. Um, but I mean, like he, you're, so people are saying he wasn't strong enough. Anakin wasn't strong. I mean, Anakin was incredibly strong. Like, I guess Ray is stronger than Anakin and so is, Ky yeah. so is Kylo. Yeah. That's, that's the implication I got from seven, eight, nine is that Ray and Kylo were supposed to be orders of magnitude stronger than anything else ever in Star Wars universe. I, I got, the, so the Ray thing makes sense to me, but I don't know about, I, but I guess Kylo never struck me as somebody who was the most powerful um meaning more powerful than anakin but okay i mean they've never really shown his power that way kylo uh up until this movie but when, with a bunch of things you didn't know exist like with the fucking life force stuff and the healing and all that other shit so i don't know that i really knew that they were more powerful until this movie and even then they're with with other uh abilities that you didn't know exist the uh, there were some like just to be clear by the way the, i thought that the special effects were pretty good um i thought the art direction was cool uh i thought the, the cinematography was pretty good i didn't think it was bad so it's, it's interesting you bring up cinematography because i actually was a little disappointed by that um jj abrams actually has really good action sensibilities yeah I, I really like him for his he does these like roller coaster shots that are fucking awesome mm -hmm. um in episode seven when they're like on the the millennium falcon for the first time and the camera like swoops behind it as it does a giant bank turn yeah it was like the trailer shot amazing shot gives me chills when i think about it and there were times in episode nine where i was like oh here we go uh jj is going to do his awesome like action camera again and he didn't do it um the the moments i'm thinking of are like when 
when Ray was taking that weird pontoon out to the Death Star, and she's like going up those giant waves. I was like, oh, there's going to be a cool J.J. Abrams shot of like the camera pitching down, showing her cresting this giant wave and then crashing down. No, the camera just kind of went up to the sky hmm. and then cut to the next scene. There were a lot of moments and a lot of shots, I thought, that could have used a lot better action directing. Okay. And yeah. just it just wasn't there. Um, the, the one shot I can think of in Episode Nine that was actually pretty cool. Was it was the shot when uh when like Poe is like light speed skipping or whatever? Yeah, that was and it's cool. like a little further. Yeah, it was cool. It was like further back into the cockpit, and he's like working the controls, and you see the the shit flying by outside the cockpit. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. And and Abrams is usually pretty cool about doing like grounded action shots like that too, but that was the one. Uh, I wasn't super impressed by a whole lot of the sword fighting, which is a shame. I the I th- um, I thought the scene with them fighting like with uh on the remains of the Death Star, I thought was cool. I thought that was fun to watch them jumping all around and, and being like Jedi and Sith. Yeah. It seemed like it was trying to be the exact, like it was trying to just reverse the episode three fight of Mustafar. Like it's not fire, it's water. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's true. And, and that's, yeah. that's a little blunt, but I did get, I did get those vibes, but I'm, I'm st- <sighs> what still bums me out. As episode eight got really close actually with with the the bridge fight, but still just that like locked off sword fighting shot from episode one, of uh of Obi Wan versus nothing beats that. Yeah, nothing beats. Jesus that. Christ, that's so good. Yeah, and episode eight actually has some shots that are I think a little bit better, but I was I th- I thought Abrams could do better. Yeah. And I I think it is just a question of like he didn't the movie didn't have the runtime for any of those shots. I th- I feel like he had to go at every scene with a scalpel and save seconds. Hmm. Um, I think you're right to make the like most form like calculated. It, it's so weird because uh, I appreciate how calculated and like surgical this film tried to be, as opposed to Endgame, which was that and actually really successful. Oh, so I think every so scene su- was like so yeah. successful. Um, yeah, I, I, that that film had a ton to ton to resolve too. I, a lot of arcs and it found screen time for them all. I'm glad you bring that up because uh, well, before I talk about Endgame, because I I do want to talk about Marvel versus this. Um, Butter King said, well, the whole point is because it basically, and for one life to continue, one would have to end. So Palpatine, knowing this, Anakin would have to, would have gave his life when Palpatine needed it most. Is that true? For one life to continue, one would have to, so, I mean, like, are we talking about the Emperor's, like, Darth Plagueis the Wise story? <laughs> is, that we're ta- is, that, <laughs> is that what we're talking about? I mean, I, I, I guess, but th- again, these are things that, like, if you read a comic or something, you would know, but not, not from the movies. Like, you would you wouldn't know that from the movie. There's no there's no line in that. Um, <laughs> anyway, so for yes for Endgame, uh, I that's what I I kept comparing this movie. I think I walked in comparing this movie to Endgame before I saw it, and that was my problem. I should not have done that because this Endgame like was the culmination of like of 23 films and a mastermind over all of them. Uh, one guy, Kevin Feige. And these movies have been, like, you know, orphaned and adopted and orphaned and adopted 15 times. And to have to put that on J.J. Abrams, now that I look back and go, like, ah, uh, you know what? I, It's not my fault for thinking that because Disney keeps telling me it's the end of the, the night of nine films with their marketing. But it was so unsuccessful in that. Uh, compared to Infinity War and Endgame. Infinity War and Endgame was like, just, it. I I, I thought for sure Endgame wasn't going to give me what I wanted because I was like, there's no way they can wrap up these fucking movies. I've watched 23 movies over the course of 10 years. There's no way they're going to give me what I want. And they gave me everything I wanted and more. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how they did it. I don't know how. I just don't know how. And it's night and day for Endgame versus this movie. It's, I I really think it's uh it's it's what it's the lead in like the the lead in teed up teed up a good ball and then those two movies dunked it yeah superbly um well, the problem with episode nine is that the tee up was was bad yeah. uh, Abrams Abrams was fantastically generous I think with episode seven and in, in saying like okay I don't know who's taking over this after me I don't know what they're gonna write I'm gonna give them some some hooks if they want to take them they don't have to that's fine too. It was actually pretty brilliant. If if I go back and like really examine episode seven, how he wrote in things in the past, he wrote in things in the future, any of those things somebody could have run with. But then Ryan Johnson came along and was like, no, 
I'm going to do my thing. <laughs> and then the ball just hit the ground. And then Abrams had to walk in again and do the impossible, which is is conclude a trilogy that had a half of a first act and Thanks, no second feet. act. Um, as opposed to Marvel, which actually had a million, kind of like you said, a million, or sorry, not a million, but several films that all played an integral part into getting you bought into all the characters. And then the two-part conclusion that was done by the same creative crew. So, yeah, yeah it's it's fun to reflect back on it now. Um, and I've been thinking a bit about this, too, of like, what will define the 2010s? And I feel like 7, 8, 9... I think 10 years from now, people will go back and watch and be like, oh, wow. Wow. Does that smack of the 2010s? Like, hmm. The like, the like, to me, in episode seven, Finn's relentless millennialism of just being like awkward and socially weird, but very idealistic and way too energetic, like textbook millennials, the old people kind of see it, I think. That kind of is like, okay, it's a very 2010s film. Last Jedi being so overbearing with its social messaging i think hmm. yeah you're right episode nine, yeah. trying to relentlessly trying to make this like two and a half hour global blockbuster epic with millions of characters and interlocking storylines and and vague storytelling i i feel like those movies have kind of summed up everything that was weird culturally about the 2010s not necessarily everything that excelled kind of like the marvel movies actually have i think they captured the zeitgeist of this decade way better than star wars films did which is weird to think about it is weird because i mean it's star wars had so many other years and fans to build on marvel obviously had comic book fans but truthfully like marvel made comic book fans of people that didn't read their comics which was me i didn't read those comics and when i went out and saw those movies i was like holy shit are these are the comics like this like oh, i'd love to read those comics and mm -hmm. and star wars did the opposite i was a huge fan of star wars. i still am but i still love star wars but I'm a huge fan of Star Wars, and so when I go to see these movies, I'm like, I can't wait. Give me more Star Wars. And then they, like, they give me this movie, and I'm like, oh, oh I don't, I don't, I didn't want, I didn't want this. This is not, yeah. this is not what I wanted for the end of nine films. Like, I didn't, I, I could have lived without. I honestly, like, I could have lived without this. Like, I, I could have waited. I could have waited another year or two for them to really figure something out or make another movie. Make a quadrilogy yeah. rather than a trilogy. Yeah, Colin Mulligan on Last Jedi, like, it really did need a better second act. Um, and Last Jedi is probably, oh, like, there I'm are sorry, things Randy I like Rose. enough about it for it to exist can help as you. its own thing. We can help you tonight. But, man, for it to take to take the role of a second act in a trilogy and do none of the heavy lifting was such a problem. Uh, <sighs> yeah, it's a bummer, too. It's a real bummer. To, to think about, like, I mean, I'm sure you remember, I remember being a kid and and just watching episodes four, five, and six and having no idea why it started at four. And then to hear rumors about the prequels happening and then the prequels actually happened. And for those to land where they did and be like, well, okay, uh, you know, didn't think it would happen, but it did. So that's that. And then for seven, eight, nine, to be like, oh my God, are they really doing it? They're really doing it. Wow. I couldn't believe it. Uh, I never thought in my lifetime I would see episodes one, two, and three, much less seven, eight, nine. Yeah. Here they are. They come and they came and went. It's just like, Wow! Wow! Okay. <laughs> I know. It's so bad. It's such a bad cap. Such a bad yeah. cap on on the other two movies. Because the other two movies, I feel like could have maybe survived, but this is just. And and I often think, well, you know, like the prequels were reviled when they came out. People hated those movies. Um, but in, in actually in ten to fifteen years time now, people are like, oh, the prequels aren't so bad. And I'm one. I'm wondering if people will say that about these movies. In 10 to, I wonder, man. In 10 to 15 the, the, years time. I don't know. There are things I like a lot about episode one. There are more things I like about episode three. Episode two is a dumpster fire start to finish. Um, <laughs> so I, I do think that, that yeah, there, there is some anger that fades, and then you can kind of see the things that were good. So I think that'll happen with the prequels. Um, I've always liked episode seven, even though I appreciate that it was intentional. It had, it had holes punched into it on purpose. Yeah. But A New Hope is accidentally the same way. They didn't know it'd be a trilogy. So there are there are holes that are accidentally there that they had to cover up later. All right. You know what? You can make it work. It's it's really just, gosh, <laughs> ah, the way it went. I just, uh, mm. it's, I, I read a, an article because I was, when I walked out of this movie, uh, did you ever see Justice League, Lawrence? I think you're muted. Um, did you ever see, uh, whenever, Lawrence, whenever you come back, I, don't, I wonder if he knows he's muted. Um, Lawrence, you're still muted. Lawrence. 
Did he lose the internet or something? I hope he didn't lose the internet. Lawrence, are you there? Uh oh. Lawrence? Did we lose him? Well, anyways, um, I uh, he punched his mic. Does he know it's muted? Oh, you're you're there. Okay. How about that? Oh, there we go. No, oh, there we I go. I got you. I got you. Did you see? Oh, yeah. Did you see uh, Justice League? Yes. So that's how I felt coming out of this movie, because I was like, I saw Justice League. And I remember like laughing at it basically the entire time because no one else was in the theater. And Autumn and I were cracking up and we walked out and we were like, Boo, what a what a dumpster fire. Like Yeah. Everything was going wrong all the time with this movie. No character knew what they were. Even Wonder Woman, who'd been already pretty well established, same with Superman. Just obviously the fucking mustache gate and all that other bullshit was happening in that movie. And by the end of it, you're just like, I don't care anymore. Who cares? Yep. What's going on? You don't even know what the villain is. You don't know why they're there. You don't know what they're doing. Yep. It's just a big guy with horns that the villains <laughs> have to punch. Yeah. And that's what I felt like coming out of Rise of Skywalker. It was a bunch of yeah. characters I didn't care about fighting another character I really should have cared about, the Emperor, and did not. Didn't. I love the Emperor. He's one of my favorite characters in anything. And I just didn't care. I didn't care what he did. He wasn't evil. He didn't do anything wrong. He... I like he, he literally he didn't do anything wrong in this movie. He I don't think he did he kill anybody. He electrocuted some ships but didn't kill anybody. Disabled them. He Well, I mean, he claimed all of the villainy of Snoke. So theoretically, he inherited all the bad things the first order had. But done. they never showed so a, a major problem that I have with a lot of action movies, especially nowadays, is that they don't show the villain doing something bad. Yeah, they just tell you they did bad stuff. They tell stuff. you they did bad, and they usually do that because it's a kid's film. Usually they have Oh, boy, to... i got to use the restroom go, go, real bad. Yeah, go for it. Sorry, um, I'll be right back. Usually they they, they got to do that because it's a kid's film, and they don't want to show the fucking you know, antagonist killing someone. But I love when movies do that. I love when movies give you someone to hate. Uh, the best example is, like, the Joker. Because the Joker... He, the Joker kind of, he does things that are evil, but it's the way he, it's the way he Ledger acts. He acts so insane. And, and honestly, the, one of the coolest, uh, I guess, motivations in Dark Knight is when you, you get to see, uh, he's filming that guy and he's talking about like, Hey, I'm going to, like, I'm going to kill, basically, I'm going to kill you if you don't say these things, recite these things after me. He sounds insane. And the, the video cuts, presumably because he killed it. Uh, and then they show it then they show the hanging body slam against the window. Right. Um, that was all really super cool. Uh, that gives you reason. It's very personal. It's a very personal death in a PG-13 movie. Um, they blew up a planet. Yeah, sure. They, they show anybody on the planet? <laughs> I don't think they did. Um, and, uh, it was, the Emperor doesn't do anything to anybody in this movie. Other than say, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that and I'm going to do this and all these other things that never actually happen, by the way, the only thing he does is shoot the lightning into the sky and disable ships. He doesn't even kill them. He doesn't even blow the ships up or anything. It's it's so funny. They And again, like, yeah, Brynjar Bjorn said they, they blew up five planets in Force Awakens, but they the equivalent, the shot there in Force Awakens, they show like seven people on a balcony. <laughs> and, and then those people explode uh, in Force Awakens, and you're like, "Well, I guess they kill literally trillions of people, but they you don't know." And the best villains are the ones that do something personally evil. Like you watch them, you know, with their bare hands, like you said in A New Hope, strangle somebody. Um, that's how you know they're a fucking bad guy, right? They're a bad guy because they just strangled the, one of the first people they meet. <laughs> on that ship uh, because they won't give him information. And that doesn't happen in this movie with, em- with the Emperor. You don't know what, what does he do? I mean, he doesn't do anything. He's He he yells at the protagonist the entire time. He's like, he gave laundry lists of things he's going to do, but he doesn't actually ever do it. He, somebody said, yeah, one of the Star Destroyers blows up a planet. That's right, they do. Do they ever show anybody on that planet? I don't think so. Do they? Yeah, they don't even show the, like, in in previous Star Wars films, they also made a great point Thanks, of showing what incredible sorrow that people that were in tune with the, with the Force could feel when that many people died. I don't think there was even a scene like that. And and I, maybe at this point something like that would be played out, but... 
Yeah, I mean, like, Obi-Wan had to take a seat when Alderaan was blown Joey. up because of all the people. Um, when Order 66 went out or whatever, um, Jedi's felt that. Well, yeah, that's true, though. That he, like, kills a bunch of... Which is cool. I think that's neat because then they show people getting killed. Mm -hmm. You know, like, that's a very personal death. And, like, they even hint at the fact that Anakin has to kill kids, which is terrible. Um, and that's those are good motivations for you to not like Anakin and not like Darth Vader. Um, and I guess even the emperor, but it's like, those are so far removed from this movie. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. Yeah. It's also just going to the drawing, like the, the idea of escalation has been somewhat exhausting. Seven months, baby. I'm like, we got a death star. Now we got another death star. <laughs> now we got a planet death star. And now it's literally, we have 400 death stars Yeah. <laughs> and they're going to blow up the entire galaxy is I get it. Like, there's nowhere else to go. But I, I do think that driving the narrative to that point really reinforces the fact that they had no personal drama to lean on. Yeah. There, were, there were no stakes. There was no narrative. There was nothing. The only narrative that was introduced at the end of Last Jedi was that, yeah, the, re the rebellion is like one ship and 20 people, and that's it. Um, but that didn't matter for Rise of Skywalker, I guess. Ah. <laughs> ah. Uh, Butter King said, the Emperor says he's going to control the world. Everybody agrees. Then there's no conflict, and to be honest, we don't overly see the Empire doing anything bad, and what would Palpatine do if he had everything he wanted? I mean, I think you're talking about the Empire, but the Empire was like, it's sort of assumed that it's a terrible regime in A New Hope. And, again, Darth Vader immediately kills someone within the first three minutes of that movie. Um, right away. And you know he's a bad guy. You know he's like, oh shit, that fucking dude just choked that guy. He didn't give him a chance. Um, and he does that with other people in uh new hope but then also in empire he's just slaughtering generals right and left now they're bad guys too but he's killing them so at least you know he's oof, like he means business he's he has no problem just murdering people outright um and the emperor doesn't do that it's just like it's so weird it's so strange because even the like even the emperor has that really mean like that ominous sense of of death around him and, and jedi when you, you're like, oh, he's going to do something really bad. And he does. He fire <laughs> he fires the, the laser and blows up the that cruiser. And he, yeah, and he's, he's like cackling in delight yeah. as all of these people are dying. Right. That's a pretty good juxtaposition. But in this movie, not at all. Doesn't he? Yeah. Fires the lightning in the air. Uh, makes it <laughs> make it so the, a few ships can't fly for a second. <laughs> and, then, and that's it. That's he's all. He's wearing a hood. He is wearing a hood. Uh, oh, uh, actually, Lawrence, is he clone? What do you think? Is he clone or is he, he's the emperor? I mean, both. I, I think, I think the movies have been pretty direct about him being so force attuned that he, he can basically like push his life force in, into the force stream or whatever, then reappear in another body if he needs to. Okay. I, I do think, I mean, I think the movie's intentionally generic about it because they don't want to say anything definite and then possibly conflict with canon at a later date. But it does feel to me just like in his function in the story now is that he's the he's just the visitation of evil, and he can appear anywhere and do anything, and it can just be him at any time, because he's that ethereal, I guess. Because <laughs> yeah, they didn't, and, and I get it again, runtime, but didn't even once acknowledge like how he survived yeah. or what form he survived in. Nothing. Did he just push his consciousness into the Force and then someone? made a clone for him to drop into but they didn't talk about that it was sith monkey um yeah i guess so sure sure but why would they do that why would this why would a sith ever do that if your master died he's dead and now you're the master that's it why would you continue to serve a master who's dead that's a good point i didn't even think about that huh uh unless unless they're that powerful that they can control you from beyond the grave and then you just you have to do so many mental gymnastics to maintain your cohesion with the events of episode nine and it, again, it, it just comes back to it's too much work. You're sitting there in the theater and they're asking you to take all these things on faith. And yeah, an hour in, you're just like, whatever, man. <laughs> you feed me the next thing, I'll just nod along. Yeah. Um, that's kind of where I was the whole time. Yeah. I, uh, yep. I, I got refunds on all of my tickets. I didn't give Disney any money for, the, for this movie. I got to see it for free. Um, I'm actually surprised that, that you got pushed there, Bruce. I, I, I would have thought that <laughs> you would have at least watched one or two more times i was i was uh like i like i said i bought tickets and i was really excited to see it and 
things got really busy before we left for uh, Christmas. So it was tough, but I was like, okay, well, we can still try and make time, you know, one of these nights to go see it. And then when I saw the movie and came back and was telling Autumn about it, I was like, I just don't, I don't know that she's going to feel like the three or four hours, whatever it is to take out of her night is going to be worth it um, for her. So guess there's some explanations here. The planet Exegol is a world between worlds. That's how he survived. Um, okay, so Exegol is like not in this physical plane. What? Which, I don't know. <laughs> also, if that's the case, then I guess I all you have to do is transmit like Google Maps locations and then everyone can find their way there. <laughs> but it explains why there'd have to be some, some dumb artifact to get there. Uh, someone else says, Legends used to be that Palpatine would use clones to prolong his life and use the force to take his consciousness while searching for the ability to become immortal. Uh, yeah, sure. Okay. Why not? All right. I mean, there there is a lot implied about what Sidious can do in Episode 3. There is, yeah. And I think somebody else said there's a line where, oh, yeah, I've died many times before. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I In, in terms of writing, there, those are just the things you put in so that if somebody asks you questions, you can just be like, I don't know. Maybe you did. Maybe you didn't. <laughs> You don't have to know the answer. You just have to acknowledge that there is the question. And then some, t- like, that satisfies a lot of people, usually. Kale Dell, that's a lot, but, of, that's uh, a lot of bone fingers. <laughs> uh, I don't know, man. There still has to be stakes. And if somebody can just turn into a ghost, there's no stakes. Um, yeah, you're right. There really, and, and yeah, there really isn't. I, I don't, uh, that was the problem with this whole movie, is that there were no stakes. I, I'm, I don't, I'm trying to think of, let's see here. So, Kylo Ren died. Let's go through the deaths. Kylo Ren died for good, from what we know of. And is that it? Well, I mean, he he disappeared so he can be a ghost. That's um, true. All right, sure. Yeah, that's a good point. So he's Le- not dead. Leia died but could be Force Ghost. Yeah, Leia. Well, Leia's definitely Force Ghost. She's She smiled on in wizened knowledge as Rey anointed herself a Skywalker at the end. Oh, yeah. Yeah, remember? Luke and Leia right. nodding sagely at Rey. Yes, you are our daughter, they seem to say. <laughs> which doesn't make sense because they're brother and sister, so... <laughs> uh, uh... Somebody was... So, oh, yeah, Hux is dead. So somebody was saying that... Hux, uh, Hux is dead. Somebody, somebody was asking the question, why is it the Rise of Skywalker? And I can answer that question. It's because she says, I'm a Skywalker. Um, which, which now means that the term Skywalker just means good, right? That's what that means. Yes, that was what I got from it. <laughs> Palpatine bad, Skywalker good. That's right. I mean, it's and and, and she, I get why because if she took the Palpatine name, everybody like, oh fuck. It's like taking a Hitler name, right? You, <laughs> you can't do yeah. that. You wouldn't. You wouldn't want to be called something Hitler related to Hitler. So I get it. I understand that. But but you're right. I know what you're. I think you're getting at the fact that the Force is still light and dark. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that. Mm. Uh. <laughs> And that name shouldn't mean, like, it's so weird because the movie's telling you names don't mean anything, but then it's saying names do mean yeah, something. I know. It's like your parentage doesn't matter, but we do have to justify the title of the film, so. It matters. It does matter, <laughs> actually, yeah. It, it does matter, but you get to pick at some point, I guess. Uh, yeah, well, it was in, uh, I, the, 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 just the throwaway. By the way, I'm pretty sure people are upset about the same throwaway line. So the, I'll, I'll make the comparison of when Obi-Wan says, well, uh, he did betray and murder your father from a certain point of view. Oh yeah. That's, uh-huh. that's what this throwaway line was in this movie. When, when uh, Kylo says, yeah, they were nobodies because they chose to be nobodies. Uh, when he was, she was, when he was talking about her parents and I was like, oh, okay, fine. Yeah. All right. I was in full eye roll mode by that point. Yeah. But yeah, when that line hit, I was like, Bleh. yeah, I know. Well, we are in deep star Wars now <laughs> where you're making a reference to retconning something yeah. to explain away your retconning of something. <laughs> Uh, also it's it's weird too because i remember somebody tweeting that like oh this movie doesn't undo last jedi no it runs with it and i'm like how is that possible no it absolutely undoes everything last jedi tried to do yeah. it undid, undid it all it did uh, it didn't even pay off it to... didn't even pay off the fucking force sensitive broom kid i thought for sure yeah. the that was the one thing that, by the way the whole movie because everyone was like what's canto bite blah 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 the Canto Bite's a throwaway. It doesn't mean anything. And I was like, okay, well, the only thing, the only way Canto Bite can mean anything is if that Broom Boy uses the Force in Rise of Skywalker. If Broom Boy comes 
and you know like rises up they show him what he what he became then canto bite means something we broom boy's gone broom boy never shows up again <laughs> like, so never comes back this is me being real generous and and i do that Sailor, sometimes thanks i guess thanks for gifting to ryoga ryoga uh, pay it forward last jedi was supposed to end uh, end with like room. oh the problem. legend of luke has spread hope throughout the galaxy right yes so you could say that the events of episode 8 is the reason why everyone showed up at the end of episode 9 is that yes, yes, the, yes. the tale of luke against the ad ad or whatever <laughs> went through the galaxy and everyone was so inspired again it's almost like a, a scene or two could have actually put a nail in that if they showed lando talking and they were like, remember when Luke faced down the <laughs> army by himself? Yeah. And everyone was so inspired that they got in their rickety little ships and decided to help out. That's a way that they could have tied those things. I, it wouldn't have saved the film, I don't think. No, but, but, it, but you're right. It would have made a, a huge difference if they had given us just one. Like, and this is, the, this is the problem with the whole movie. If there were none of those connecting scenes. There were no connecting scenes to Last Jedi. There were no connecting, to, connecting scenes for, for, its, for itself at times. Like, there weren't even a connecting scene from, like, when they jump from one planet to another or whatever. When they jump from one plot point to another. There should have been something in the middle that was like, oh, we got to go do this. Like, some some way of describing the action they're going to take. And there never was. It, yeah. it was always like, a, oh, uh, another MacGuffin. And then they go find another MacGuffin. And they're like, oh, well, you know, we need this map. And now we need this lightsaber. Now we need this. And you're like, okay, I, how are you following that? I don't even know how you're following this. Yeah. It's like, if I'm trying to be watching the whole deal how are you doing it so it's got to roll with it you know oh, it's, yeah. it's crazy too to go back and watch episode seven and see all of the little plot hooks that were inserted and went nowhere yeah. Yeah. um like like ray's i guess force echoes how she can sense things by touching them all the stuff with the lightsaber where it came from oh, no, none of that nothing. stuff was used never answered um the the what is it Max von Snyder, Sydow's character at the beginning. Oh yeah, says some stuff about like how this will make it right, and like I'm serving a princess or whatever. None of that is ever referenced or touched on again. And I, and I get it, like you're you're inventing gaps that maybe Episode Eight could have used and didn't, but other TV series can maybe work with. But yeah, the Episode Seven for it establishing the trilogy really did try to open up a lot of potential that was just not touched on. Um, not that it had to be, but it would have at least made the trilogy feel cohesive mm -hmm. which boy it feels anything but now with this movie it oh. really does yeah and 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 you talking about it feeling like uh justice league which makes total sense um to me uh most movies feel like this to some degree but it felt a lot like uh jupiter ascending yeah. and that it, yeah. it was like two and a half movies crammed into the runtime of one <laughs> Shit. and how that that raw density at a certain point when they're just like, and then there's this, and then there's this, and then this guy does this, and this is why you should feel this way now. And now he has got laser skates, and now they're in space. And, and it's just like the raw, just the raw density and, and velocity of the film. At a certain point, it's just exhausting. And, you know, 20 minutes into to Jupiter Sending, you're just like, I don't know what I'm watching anymore, and I don't know why I should care. And there's two more hours of movie? Uh, okay. Yeah. I guess I'll just turn my brain off and let it roll into my roll into my head. That's That's exactly how I felt watching episode nine. I mean, what, just like, what a bummer! Yeah, because that's I didn't, super super bummer. Because I mean, like I didn't know, I didn't want that to happen. I, I this was Star Wars has never been a movie for me that I would just turn my brain off. Like if this was, because Fast and Furious is like that for me. Like I go see Fast and Furious, so turn my yeah. brain off, and be like, hey, whatever, um, <laughs> no big deal. <laughs> They're fighting a the nuclear sub. Who cares? Um, <laughs> and Star Wars is different. Star Wars feels like a hero's journey to me. Fast and Furious feels like an action movie to me. And this feels. Rise of Skywalker feels like an action movie. It doesn't feel like a hero's journey. Um, and that's what, Star, that's what Star Wars nailed so authoritatively and perfectly back in 1977 is it nailed that hero mythology. And that's why it resonated with everybody is because the hero mythology resonates with everybody all the time and it has for thousands of years. And this, this wasn't it. This trilogy wasn't it. Um, it's, I don't even know how you fuck that up because there's a template. <laughs> there's a template for it. That has existed yeah. for thousands of years, and, and uh, all you have to do is follow the template. <laughs> I mean, you fuck it up by trying to do the opposite of the template. Yeah, yeah. Which, again, I keep pointing to the Celeste Jedi. All it did was do the opposite of every beat. <laughs> it just took every beat and flipped it and tried to make a movie out of it. And the movie was trash. And then, the well, trash is so strong. I, sh I shouldn't be so vicious, but the movie was unsuccessful in its creative attempts, as far as I'm concerned. The problem was it did it did proximity damage. Like, it, it then made Episode Nine 
impossible. Yeah. Uh, which is is weird. Like J.J. Abrams has has saved so much, has come yeah. into like the worst situation and pulled it all around so many times. I really did believe that if anyone could do it, Abrams could. I did too. And to some to some extent, I I appreciate the attempt because I think he made the most sporting, like fullest attempt any human could make. But I do think he needed triage at some point. He needed to just, and to a degree, I get why he may not have been allowed to do this, but he needed to just ignore that half the cast was in the trilogy ever. <laughs> like, get rid of Rose, get rid of Finn, unfortunately, which is, sucks because I really liked Finn, yeah. episode seven Finn. Um, just get rid of him. Don't introduce new characters. Jesus Christ, what are you doing? <laughs> Do you remember any of them? There was the lady that Finn kind of. Uh, I don't remember her up name. Zor- the, like, Zori. Stormtroopers that, Z- Zori. Yeah. Oh, that was another weird thing. How they like. How they made Mac Finn Attack force sensitive the and then kind of implied that your conscience is just the force talking to you. <laughs> yeah. That was that was that was what I took away from it. Well, so throughout the movie, they, they've already confirmed. Like JJ's confirmed, and Finn's con- or. Uh, John Boyega's confirmed that, like, the thing he was trying to say throughout the movie when he's like, hey, I want to tell you something, Ray, which was, it was that. Was that he loved her? No, no, it was that he's force sensitive. He was going to tell her that. Oh, what? Yeah, yeah, he was going to tell her that. And Oh, I didn't read that at all. I thought he was going to say, I love you, right before they died. No. And then they didn't, which is why he was like, oh, I can never say that. Yeah, no, no, no. It was it was that he was force sensitive. Um, well, no, but then that doesn't make sense because he refused to tell Poe the thing that he was going to say right before they were going to get executed. I know. But then later, Poe, like, but then later he was like, yeah, I do know what she's going through. And Poe was like, what the fuck are you talking about? He was talking about the Force. So why would he not tell him then, but then tell him later? Uh, yeah, so J.J. Abrams confirmed the director. So let's see here. That is so dumb. I Usually I respect and prefer the creator's vision of, of particular scenes. That's stupid as hell. It makes way more sense that Finn had feelings for Ray and was going to tell her, but then didn't. There you go. I put the link in Discord. So, uh, uh, JJ confirmed that what Finn wanted to tell Ray was that he was force sensitive. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I know. That's so bad. I, that's so stupid. I don't. It's so dumb. Also, how do you explain that right before you're about to die? What does that even mean? I know we're about to die, but I can move things with my mind, I, and then you just die. I, I don't know. I'm not sure why that would come up when you're dying. You know? That's also the exact because like the episode nine is starved for moments of real human interaction, and and maybe that's me being, maybe that's me just dying for a drink of water, but I I assumed that that was a human moment where they had human emotions and were about to express them on a human level because the situation was very stressful. Mm, yeah, and then JJ Abrams had to come and take that away too. No, it's more Star Wars lore. Great. <laughs> Uh, that sucks a lot. <laughs> that sucks even more than I thought it did. <laughs> um, I, I was, I for some reason never thought he was going to say that he loved her because that didn't. Well, ironically, it didn't make any sense in the context of the other of the other films. So I was like, I think it makes sense in context of Episode Seven, namely that, and and this is something that I actually think is is pretty smart about Finn's character. He's such a lost puppy that he latches on to everyone he sees that is kind to him. So yeah. Poe was kind to him. So now Poe is his, like big brother. Uh, Ray is kind to him, or at least is like an anchor in this unknown world of him trying to live on his own. So now he's in love with Ray. I get that. That's like him being a weird fourteen-year-old who doesn't know how to live as an adult human yet. That's true. Those are yeah. actually pretty cool character moments, but apparently none of those see, are real. See, it's funny. I took I took a different, took completely different meaning from episode seven, which was uh, mm. uh, Finn uses a lightsaber, um, and so when he uses a lightsaber. I was like, oh, neat. Okay. So I understand how the, why they're trying to tie together the fact that he's force sensitive. It's because he used that lightsaber in episode seven, et cetera, et cetera. So I was like, oh, that's fun. Sure. But it hit me in the back of the head when he was like, I can feel it at the end of Rise of Skywalker. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck? They're, they're paying that off now? And for what reason? <laughs> like, th- there was no reason. He never used it. He just said, uh-huh. I can feel it. And I, I mean, like, actually, uh, who was it? Didn't Han Solo say the same thing? Um, no, it was Leia. That's it. And she was force sensitive. Yeah, no. it was super Leia. It was, it was Leia. Yeah, I, it didn't make any sense. <laughs> it just didn't make any sense. <laughs> it's, just, I, it's just like such a weird thing. Such a strange, strange thing that they just threw in at the end for seemingly no reason. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that was them trying to give some depth and arc to Finn's character because, again, episode eight 
kind of did the opposite. It sort of took away character depth. Me either, and young any Gretel. Me either. Illusion of an arc, which is kind of astounding from a writing perspective that you could actually undo any the small amount of work that was done in episode seven, but it did somehow it found a way. <laughs> um, so yeah, I guess episode nine. How do you how do you reconcile those things? I guess you just make him a Jedi. Why not? Fuck it. That's so strange. Ugh. So strange. Yeah, no, that doesn't that doesn't make any sense. I thought I thought Poe's arc was actually one of the better ones in episode nine. Poe's arc made sense, and like I like that he kept hitting on her. Yeah. Um, they did a good job, uh, I think, of, yeah. of reconciling him being a cool flyboy from episode seven and a kind of self assured asshole from episode eight. I thought they they combined those character traits pretty well into one character in episode nine. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, and then yeah, right. they added they added the. Oh, is it Jana or whatever? Oh, Apparently Jenna. Apparently, yeah. is Lando's daughter Jenna? So, uh, whatever. Yeah. So we were. Sure. Uh, somebody just brought up in my chat. They said, "Can we talk about creepy Lando at the end?" <laughs> there. Oh yeah. What was the what that line delivery that Billy D. Williams gave when he was something? To, was it when he said, "Let's find out"? He goes, "Let's find out." And we're like, I was like, is he is he attracted to her, or was that because he he she might be his daughter? I was like, what the fuck? Like, I was so confused as to what the delivery of that line was supposed to be. And then when I got out and everyone's like, oh, yeah, Jana's Lando's daughter. I was like, all right, well, I guess that's better than he's sexually attracted to a woman, you know, 50 years his, his younger. <laughs> I don't know. Do, do you remember that? I mean, Lando. That weird. Lando's going to skis on everything. I, I just thought that was him trying to be, I don't know, magnanimous Lando. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, let's I, I was so I was so checked out at that point. <laughs> Also, I didn't care about that character, and I didn't care about Lando, yeah. which is sad. Yeah. I, There's a lot I didn't care about when all the characters were having their, I guess we're done here, conversation. <laughs> I was, uh, on a sidebar, I was really bummed out when they were riding horses on the Star Destroyer. And... Oh, yeah, they did that. And and it looked like the Star Destroyer wasn't moving. They, I think there was a throwaway line where they're like, oh, it has to hover. But, like kind of never moved and it just looked like a sound stage to me every time they were riding horses on it and that made me feel weird because it didn't make me feel like it was a star wars set piece it just made me feel like they had set this thing up and they're like it'll be really cool because you guys are riding on like a spaceship you're riding a horse yeah. on a spaceship and i was like no dude it's just a fucking floor it's just a floor like there was no context of where they were i don't know that made me feel weird i didn't like that <laughs> Yeah, it seemed like there were a lot of beats uh, that were really cool pieces of concept art. And they're like, oh, we got to put that in the film. Yeah. And then they had their like picture of concept art, and then they looked at their cork board full of plot points, and they just arbitrarily like pinned a piece of concept art to a plot point. It said, horses on a starship happens <laughs> now. Uh, uh, room full of robed figures happens now. <sighs> yeah, it just didn't didn't add up into anything greater it was it was a oh i i remember now the phrase that kept going through my mind and i, and I can't remember where i heard this initially so i can't take credit for it but it i remember there was ah the, the quote is something like well you've learned all the notes now you have to learn how to play the music uh episode nine was hmm. so full of notes and had almost no music yeah it was it just cramped full of stuff but it never congealed into any human tale of interest or value yeah 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 you're absolutely right. That's a, that's a really good way to put it. It never felt like there was uh, any harmony in what they were doing. Oh. It was just like a bunch of garbage thrown at you. And I'm not sure that I've seen a Star Wars movie that felt like that. I'm not sure that I've ever seen any Star Wars film that felt like there wasn't a, like a singular vision. Like Even Rogue One, to me, felt like there was somebody steering the ship mm -hmm. um even though that was it was pretty disjointed at times i loved rogue one but it was it felt i knew, i could see why people didn't like it it was disjointed and like you know a lot there were a lot of different characters a lot of things they didn't know about etc cetera, etc cetera. um but and even solo solo was the same same deal like they got you know they lost uh lord miller halfway through and then they had to bring ron howard in still didn't feel too disjointed it still it did a little bit but nothing like this yeah, this is this is a whole other whole other level. Buster Brown, thanks for the sub. It did. It does feel like a very well trained robot had to make a Star Wars film, and they were giving <laughs> given a list of objectives, 
and none of those objectives were like tell tell a, an interesting tale of human interest it was like we have to satisfy all of these people and what we perceive they want out of this film yep uh and that's i mean down yeah. really down even to the like the ray and kylo thing i think that's the most there's a fan there is a fan community out here who wants this thing yeah so we're gonna write it in and make it happen i uh so let me ask because i i i'm that's why i love twitch because i get to talk directly to you guys um and obviously lawrence i want your thoughts on this too but like a lot of people are saying that this is what happens when you let the fan community write a movie um this is what happens when you try to please everybody, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Do you as the audience feel that way? Do you feel like this movie was trying to please you, but in turn failed to please anybody? Um, because I see, you know, I do see, I see positive reviews of the film. And so I'm like, oh, okay, well, they're, they're happy people. But do you feel like your, your intelligence has been insulted or do you feel like, or, or do you feel satisfied with what you got? Um, uh, how do you feel about that, Lawrence? Man, that's that's a really good question. I so I I think Star Wars has never has very rarely been a film that has tried to like say something profound, and that's not I a bad I see thing. What my it, chat's it's, trying to say. It's populist entertainment. Um, it's one of the my most popular tales, like, the story, or the world's yeah, ever done. by committee. Um, and it got there by telling stories that people like. So, I I think that. The Last Jedi is representative of a movie that has something to say and tries to say it. It does. Um, so I, I don't fault the movie for trying to give people what they want. That's what commercial entertainment is. Mm -hmm. um, I think what I... I fault the movie for... To some degree, I, do, I don't know that there's any way that movie could have been good in the circumstances it was being made in. Because um, I, I am thinking about like the way for that movie to be good is for there to be a different episode eight um, or for it to just ignore half the characters. Yeah. And I don't think Disney would have allowed that. And to redo episode eight, I think also would not be allowed. So I, I think there's some things that could not happen. So I think the movie was in the place of, of as a commercial product, having certain imperatives pushed upon it and to satisfy those, it did the best job it could. But I think the situation it was in, I don't, I don't think it was like, and I don't think it was an attempt to like pacify the fan base as much as it was maybe a return to trying to just make movies that people enjoy versus movies that lecture you about your, your latent sexism or whatever. <laughs> um, because yeah, after seven film or after seven films, it, it makes sense that you might want to try something new that didn't work out too well. Thanks, psychotic. Because when you deviate from, like you said, when you deviate from the formula, you get something that doesn't work. So, uh, I kind of get the way it turned out. And to some degree, I think it's almost a cautionary tale of expecting evergreen storytelling from a property that established itself as telling the most templated story that's ever been told. And in a way, I think maybe Marvel films will struggle with this in the next decades. Uh, yeah. So yeah, yeah I, I, I think it's, I think there's truth, but I also think it's a bit short-sighted to say that this movie sucked because it was just trying to make people on Reddit happy. I think it was trying to make everyone happy, and people on Reddit are, you know, part of the human race, so that kind of works out. Yeah. Um, but I also think that the mess that it walked into was insurmountable, basically. Um, and, yeah, I don't think... I think its intentions were proper in as much sure. as any Star Wars film should try to please people. Yeah. But man, it just it had too much trash to try to pick up. Yeah, yeah, I I agree. I uh, I thought a lot about this because you and I, personally, Lawrence, you, we've had a number of talks about this, which is making content for people that can immediately give us feedback. And like, I think a lot about this because not only do we listen to you guys on Twitch and on YouTube, but then we also have to have a vision of our own when we're making content. So it's like we have to trust ourselves, but also listen to you guys occasionally. Um. And I hear a lot of artists on the other side of this and like, you know, filmmakers, television producers, that sort of thing. And I, people I know that will say to me, fuck the audience. I'm going to make what I want. And if they like it, great. And if they don't like it, fuck them. I don't necessarily, <laughs> I don't necessarily believe that. I think that there is a, there's a, a happy median in there somewhere, which is you've got a vision for something, but also sometimes people can tell you how to make it better. Um, not always, but a lot of, the, but I think most of the time, probably there are, there are a couple of, uh, 
a couple of times that the audience is right. They'll say something and you're like, oh, you know what? I should try that. Um, and I, I think we're in a, I'm in a, I'm worried because like when a bunch of people complain about Sonic, then they, <laughs> then they dedicate $10 million and a bunch of people's time to fixing Sonic. And now everyone's like, Sonic is better. We did it. And that worries me because I'm like, oh shit. Does that mean that everything now, even with somebody who's like, they have a vision and there's an artist out there who wants to make a movie and wants to write and direct a film is like, I got this really cool idea for a plan. And then like they, re they release it and everyone's like, this is stupid. It should have been this way. <laughs> and then the studio goes, uh, let's fix it because the audience says to fix it. I'm really, really worried about that. Um, and I just hope that that's not something that we all think that if we get on Twitter and complain enough that they're going to change our films because if they are and they turn out like this, then no one's going to be happy. Everyone's going to be like, well, that was just another fucking movie. Who cares? It won't be a, t a, a cultural touchstone like um, any Christopher Nolan movie or the original mm. Star Wars or Jurassic Park or Saving Private Ryan or, you know, like these movies that were huge that, again, required a visionary somewhere along the way to know the audience but also know his product, his or her product. And that's something that's important to me. Uh, as somebody who creates content is that like, I want to create content for people and I want to make sure that people are feeling that, like they're heard, but also like, Hey, maybe trust me a little more than you trust yourself. You know, I, <laughs> I don't know maybe because I, because I, because I've been doing it for a while and I might know a little bit. I'm not, I'm not being like, uh, arrogant about it. It's just more, Hey, I've been doing it for a little bit. Um, and I don't know. It's, I, it's, I always wonder if the audience is worried about this or not. I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't think yeah, I think I think well, it, it's tough, and and I, I I'm not saying this for you so much, Bruce, because I know you understand this, but I'm just kind of saying this to frame yeah, what yeah, I'm about to say yeah. is that the audience is not one thinking organism; no, it's, it's many different people. Yeah. Um, it, you you are right, I think, to talk about the democratization of creative direction because we've kind of seen what that looks like. Uh, YouTube is thoroughly democratic. And the most popular YouTube content, i.e. the content that pleases the most amount of people, is, I would say, pretty creatively devoid. But that's that's okay. Not everyone needs to watch something challenging and interesting and, and thought-provoking. But, you know, when, when Logan Paul is the most popular thing because he just acts like an asshole, and that's what people want to see, then, yeah, maybe designed by committee or designed by the, the whims of the human race is not the best idea. Um, I do think it takes somebody willing to make something that's just out of their own head um and Thanks, to a degree Raya. this this is it kind of overlaps with another topic Not we talked a bit about which is like death stranding hideo kojima talked a lot about the the divergence between making something that's intentionally designed to appeal to everybody versus something that is a little more creatively uh, spontaneous something that hasn't gone through the crucible of of trying to vet how many people will like it and how profitable it'll be and how many creative trade-offs you have to make for something to be appealing to as many people as possible to make as much money. Um, instead, if something is fueled entirely by creative creative vision and gets a budget and can be realized in a very real way is a different sort of thing. And those are the things that usually capture people's attention instead of the media that is made to capture everyone's attention. It's an interesting irony. No, you're right. Um, yeah. the, the problem is, though, that's impossible, like nearly impossible, because uh, everyone's head is filled with the weirdest stuff. <laughs> And that's kind of why I like when somebody is like, no, I'm going to express my creative truth. And it ends up being like a Neil Breen film. Uh, to me, that is that is the reality of creative expression without considering one's audience. Right. Is it ends up being a weird gateway into your own mind and all the weird things that go on in there. Um, so when so you have somebody like Spielberg or J.J. Abrams, who until now has been pretty good about creating movies that appeal to everybody and kind of tell the same stories, but do it with a kind of a new rapper. It, I think movies like this do cause you to sort of reflect on, well, wait a minute, uh, just how just how templatized is this storytelling medium and why did it fail now? Um, hmm. it, I don't know. It, those are the inscrutables that make good storytelling different from bad. Uh, but certainly I do think that I don't I don't think appealing to the masses is what killed this movie because Star Wars has always tried to do that. Yeah. Um, That's true. I don't that's it's silly to think that that these films were ever like an art project. Um, although things like Last Jedi get closer to that. Um, I don't know. I, 
people may say that they want creative visions, but they don't because that's what everyone got mad at Last Jedi about is that it wasn't the Star Wars movie that yeah. they were used to. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it. the tough thing is when you get down to it, people really do want the impossible, which is I want something new but familiar. I want something fresh but, you know, not too different. I mean... Uh, and t- to ride that line is, is impossible, yeah. It's, it's, it's funny you say that it's impossible because I can point to the biggest franchise in movie history in the last 10 years, Marvel. I mean, they did it. Uh, they, they did it once. They, well, they, they did it multiple times. They, but they, they made no. they, Well, they made something that was, like you said, it was familiar, but just a little, a little bit different. Just a touch. Enough for people to keep going back. And that's, like, that is so fucking hard to do. It is so hard to do. And I think people are always like, every Marvel movie is the same. And I'm like, in a, yes, in a specific way, yeah. I think you're right. I think that they're like, obviously, there's the mirror image of the of the hero who's the villain, et cetera, et cetera. But people kept going back. They kept going back to see these movies. And then it culminated in the biggest movie uh, ever <laughs> of all time. Yeah. So they did it. Uh, and it's so it is. But it, like Lawrence, like you said, it's it's nearly impossible. It is nearly impossible to do that. Uh, and over and over and over. Yeah, the over and over thing is what I wonder about. So Marvel's what Phase Four? What are they up to? Now? Yeah, they're in phase. They're, they're just starting Phase Four. Yeah. So yeah, I I feel like we're gonna see the same discussions happen again about Marvel films yeah. that have happened about Star Wars, which is that oh it's we've seen this before. Why are they doing it again? They need to change it up, and then they do change it up, and it's like oh this one sucked. Why did they abandon all the things that made the other Marvel films work? Um, it's gonna get to the weird the same spot I think. Just, just caught in between trying to be creatively unique, but also not freak people out with uh, crazy new ideas and things that are not proven to work over centuries of storytelling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's. I'm kind of excited to see where Marvel goes from here because this is, man, this is just ultimate late game Star Wars. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, Bruce, I'm curious because you you read so much extended universe stuff. Did it? Did this feel like one of the weirder Star Wars novels to you? No. No, right? no, no. Really? No, okay. the, the, extended, the Expanded Universe stuff, like, for all of their faults, they were really singularly focused. So it, hmm. they had one focus, and that was the main character, so uh, Luke Leia Han. And, like, you, obviously, they were, like, the outliers, but generally, those books focused on Luke Leia and Han. So you always had your touchstones. Um, and... Anytime they were going through something weird or whatever else, it was always like, oh, well, I know what Luke Leigh and Han would do in this situation, right? Um, and that's what you didn't have in these movies. You, you, all those characters were wild cards. Uh, Han was dead in the first one. Luke was dead in the second one. And also not at all the Luke you remember. And Leia is, you know, a bunch of extra footage. So it's it just didn't... You didn't have those touchstones in these movies and therefore they're brand new characters and so then that's a lot to have to be like well i hope these new characters are fun because if i got nothing to go back to and that's what i i ultimately kept coming back to when i was watching these movies is i was like in force awakens i thought for sure when the lightsaber is moving around in the snow uh, at the very end of the movie i was like this is it it's gonna fly into luke's hand he's gonna be there and he's gonna come in and save the day and then Luke will, will train Ray, And then it goes into Ray's hand. And I was like, okay, fine. <laughs> fine. <laughs> what, whatever. Uh, by the way, just because I was like, I, and this sounds like me being like, oh, I want to be pleased with, with Star Wars. But Mark Hamill said exactly the same thing. He said, I don't understand why they didn't just have it go into Luke's hand. Uh, he, he was also confused. Um, and he plays the motherfucker. So whatever. <laughs> um, and, uh, and then at the end of this movie, uh, Rise of Skywalker, I was like, oh, this is it. Fuck yeah. They're going to bring all these force ghosts back together. They're going to do something you've never seen force ghosts do before, but it's because they're all together and like, it's their, it, the, you know, it's the power of the Jedi and they're going to help Ray. And then Ray gets yeah. up and then Ray gets up because she heard voices. But, so yeah, I, a brief aside, Bruce, how do you, how do you feel about, that little nugget that they wrenched in at the end, which is that all of the Jedi were suddenly empowered into Rey, and all of the Sith were suddenly empowered into Palpatine. Yeah. <laughs> I guess to try and make this the ultimate showdown of good versus evil. <laughs> but the, my problem with that was, like, doesn't that kind of fly in the face of the Force? 
Because everyone talks about the Force as though it's something that isn't controlled, isn't conscious, hmm. doesn't have an agenda. But if now all of the Jedi are suddenly saying, no, we are collectively funneling Thanks, Force power into you from beyond the grave, doesn't that make it move away from this like feeling of fate or determination? You're right. I mean, you're absolutely right. I, I When they started getting into that, I was like, wait, what? That that also kind of philosophically disrupts a lot of the ways they've talked about the force. Yeah, it did. It really did. And <sighs> and that's like and and it was it was weird because there wasn't even a visual for that. Like there wasn't a visual for like all of them coalescing inside of Ray, other oh, than man. just the voices. Oh. oh, if I could only have seen the screen tests of them like trying to have CG ghosts fly into her <laughs> as she's picking up her lightsaber. Well, I, I go back to Harry Potter. Harry Potter did it so, <laughs> so well, but there were four movies before it. Um, in Goblet of Fire, when he's casting against Voldemort and like his parents' ghosts pop out of that. Um, and they're like, they talk to Harry and they're like, hey, we'll help you go running. And I, I remember watching that being like, this, this could be so cringy. I should be cringing so hard at this. But I'm not because I've got four movies and a bunch of magic to back up what just happened. Um, because those are the rules of the world. And when that shit happened in this Rise of Skywalker, those rules had never been established. Never. And no one had ever talked about how all of the Jedi should go into one person and all the Sith should go into the other and they're going to fight each other. Like, that had that, nobody had ever explained anything anywhere near that. And so when that happened, I was like, what the fuck? Are you kidding me? Like, isn't it normally just two dudes fighting with lightsabers? <laughs> like, why is it now a bunch of ghosts that we didn't see uh, apparently resurrecting people and having them fight each other? Uh, even though they didn't do anything different, by the way. One shot lightning, the other used lightsabers. <laughs> so, yeah. So. Two lightsabers. <laughs> I, what the fuck? I, none of, and, the, and the fight, like... It's if uh, <laughs> if if the force is supposed to like I don't know if it's supposed to embody people and like and like I don't know be the visitation of destiny then you can't do that like you can't have that con like what what's the word contradiction is the ultimate term of like the fight of good and evil and and it's funny you bring up Dark Knight because I feel like Dark Knight handled that really well. Um, or, or rather, it, it handled it by saying it couldn't handle it. Whenever Batman captured the Joker, First and the Joker's issue, like, "This is what happens." Subbing, when that's it. That's an unstoppable force meets an immovable object. Somebody, somebody who is evil and cannot be redeemed, put against somebody who refuses to kill. Um, it's a, it's a moral imperative. Or sorry, it's a what's the word? It's a moral contradiction. Yeah. There is no winning answer. So if like if the visitation of all good and order on the planet is fighting against the visitation of all evil. And somehow destiny or the force is supposed to be the thing that determines the outcome of this. That's like, what does that mean? What does that conflict even mean? Of course, it's going to be good. And if it's not, boy, does that ask a lot of questions. <laughs> yeah. I, these these are all the thoughts that are just rolling through my head as I'm trying to piece together what to care about as this movie's yeah. like like barreling towards a conclusion. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It felt like it was like a train was going to hit me. And I was like, well, wait, wait, hold on, hold on. I want to know what's going on. <laughs> and, it's like, and then it just plows you and you're like, okay, well, I guess it's over. Yeah, I guess we're done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I just, man, I just felt like all the air had left my lungs by the end of that film. Um, yeah. And it's a bummer. Uh, sorry, I, I massively interrupted. Um, you did? I think you, oh, you were building up steam to a really good point. I was? Oh, man, I don't think I was. I don't even remember. Yeah, anymore. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it doesn't, like, I. it's all the stuff that you're thinking. It's funny because, like, you're thinking a lot of the stuff that I just couldn't put words to. Like I told you, I was just shell shocked. I, yeah. I, I was just, I wasn't even, I wasn't even thinking anymore. And that's what made me sad is that like the best movies, like Endgame made me think the entire time. Like I was like trying to keep up with the time travel stuff, even though obviously there's some plot holes there. And I was trying to keep up with like what each character was thinking and doing what their motivations were, because I knew a bunch of their motivations from previous films. Same with infinity war. And so there was so much uh, emotion in each, you know, fucking flick of the shield from Captain America or, uh, you know, whatever was happening. There's always something happening with those facial expressions and the way they talk and move um, because of all the movies before them. And that's what this movie should have had. It didn't because it had Ray, Finn, and Poe, who I had no connection to at all. None. And, and Felicity... <laughs> 
Kerry Russell. And the only, the only, the, the biggest laughs that, that came out of me were for uh, C-3PO. I thought Anthony Daniels killed it. I thought C-3PO felt exactly like C-3PO because he always does. So. Yeah, you know, that's that's super valid. Um, C-3PO had a lot of screen time AC and I didn't Deltas. hate it. Thanks for the prime. Which is rare. Also, they still did lean on the C-3PO's annoying uh, thing a little bit. I thought I thought Poe delivered some good lines in that tick, but shockingly, they managed to write 3PO into the film in a way other than him just being annoying, getting dunked on by everybody all the time. Yeah. So, yeah, I actually, thinking back, the first third of the film had some good stuff in it. it did, but yeah. man, when it... Oh, boy. <laughs> when it... When it sets in, it sets in hard. <laughs> I'm not really tough. I'm telling you, it feels like it would be like if you had seen Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part Two, but had never seen the the seven other films that came before. It. That's what it felt like. Yeah, because it's mm-hmm. like a bunch of shit that was just thrown at you, and you're like, "Oh, those are the rules." <laughs> All right. So Mon Mondine brings up a good point in chat. Why is his arm not red anymore? Oh, I noticed that. Yeah, you're like, right. His arm's not red. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if he still had a silver leg either, but I why? why uh, I don't know. Wh- why? Why even bother? Why? Why? <laughs> it doesn't matter. Why do it? Uh, I don't know. Also, yeah, 3PO, considering all the new guys as his friends, made no sense. Yeah, because he spent no time around them. That's a good point. Wait, what was it? 3PO was like, I'm spending this last moment looking at my friends or whatever. Oh, yeah. And he, he had only been around them for maybe like an hour. <laughs> his arm was red in the trailers? Really? Yeah, because it wasn't... Oh, his arm was gold again by the end of episode 7. Boy, I didn't notice that. Sure. Uh, okay. Damn it. Yeah. Yeah, whatever. Star Wars. I mean... Sure. That kind of that kind of stuff... Like, again, if the movie had been good, I wouldn't have cared. If somebody had been like, what about his red arm? I'd be like, well, I don't give a shit. <laughs> like, yeah. if the movie's good, it doesn't matter. But there's, it's just, now you're just piling on at this point. <laughs> Pretty much. You know? Yeah. Um, I don't know. Well, anyways. <laughs> I was so bummed. Well, this is good. I was so bummed. This feels like a good therapy session. I, I, yeah, no, I, I was super bummed, too. Because I, I have been, Mandalorian and Fallen Order are so fucking awesome that I was like, whoa, they're getting this right. Rise of Skywalker is going to be great. And wow, <laughs> was I let down. I was just, I maybe my expectations were too high. Maybe that was it. Yeah, it's been a real roller coaster, huh? Because, yeah, Mandalorian's been fantastic. Jedi Fallen Order was really, really good. Kind of like, you know, exactly like you said. And uh, uh, I was I was feeling pretty good about Star Wars again. <laughs> and, nah, I mean, at least, you know, like, Mandalorian's over. That, you know, that ended. So now I can just not think about it for a while. Yeah. I, it, you know, it, it sh- I shouldn't treat it like it's emotional labor to live in a world with an entertainment product about no dudes with laser swords and magic powers it's, it's definitely not no, no no not at all yeah i do think it is it is new territory though of these massive worldwide entertainment products and the various journeys they're trying to make by st- trying to stay relevant and uh keep getting box office stuff it's uh it's interesting to see the long and winding path that some of these properties are taking yeah, it, and and it's uh, sa- it's sad in some respects, like it has been with Batman. <laughs> you know, like sometimes you got garbage like uh, Batman and Robin, and then sometimes you get masterpieces like Batman Begins, and then you're and then you're back to Justice League. So <laughs> it's, that's kind of I think that's the 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 ride that's that Star Wars is now on. Yeah, uh, it's you know, and it's funny too that you mentioned Marvel films because. They basically had 40 to 50 years of audience testing with their narratives. And up, man. They've like redone dude. them so many times that they, the people who come in to write the films have a pretty good sample set of what works and doesn't work in terms of the comic narratives they can pick from. So to try to make new content in a you know a property that's established itself as being a worldwide aud- like audience of everyone kind of property, but not have that test bed is actually really interesting. And now that like, now that Marvel has sort of run through all of its top tier storylines, um, I guess there's there's actually plenty. I, sh- I shouldn't be so uh, so reductive. <laughs> but now, yeah, I feel like Marvel's going to hey, get Jared. to that place pretty soon Jared too, Ray, where they're going to have to come prime. up with new stuff, and people aren't going to like it. Um, it's funny that DC couldn't manage to get the one right because they also have a bank of material to, to draw from. <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> yeah I, I I feel like this is just this is just the life cycle of a 
of a product like this. It's, it's funny, too, because I, I think of stuff like Disney, where they tell these kinds of stories, but it's anthology-based. Like, every Disney feature is a new story with new characters that can kind of hit the same themes, but the new wrapper makes it seem fresh every time. Um, it You don't really get that when you're dealing with the same property like Star Wars, something that's been around for decades. So you have to keep trying to you keep trying to break new ground, but but also make it seem the same. I'm just repeating myself at this point. Oh, yeah, but, but but yeah, yeah, that's can't wait to see. I'm either. I I'm, mean, I'm, I'm excited. Uh, Feige may be doing a movie or a trilogy or something like that. Uh, I, th I think the guys from Game of Thrones are now off of it. I think they were going to, and they ended up not doing it. Um, hmm. Ryan Johnson may still be on tap. Uh, <sighs> I. I I should see Knives Out. People say it's good. People say it's great. Just, yeah. Man, I'm worried that it'll it'll be oh too clever, and I'll just keep rolling my eyes at how smart it thinks it is. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I shouldn't. I mean, I that's generally the way he makes movies. Usually. It is. Um. I can't stand it, dude. I I tried, but. Yeah. There's just something about the way he makes films that makes me just kind of writhe in my skin. Everybody, everybody's agreeing that Knives Out is good. Yeah. Uh, my chat's saying, yeah. my chat's saying it, so I don't People know. People said that about Looper and Brick too, though, and I had pretty bad reactions to those. Oh, movies. did you really? Oh boy, if you didn't like Looper or Brick, I don't think you're gonna like Dives Out. Because I, yeah. I was, I was, I liked Looper. And I thought Brick was fine too. Like I, I thought, I think they're fun, kind of fun, clever movies. But yeah, if you don't like the way he talks to you in, in the theater, then oof. I'm not sure. Yeah, that's kind of the thing. Yeah, I mean, Brick was largely um, not inoffensive. <laughs> but it's just there were there were things that lingered on which is like I get it I get it yeah. I've seen a noir film I get it Ryan we get it everyone gets it you can move nope we're still here um, and then and then yeah Looper just yeah yep. it was two thirds of one movie that was okay and then a third of another movie that was not good at all <laughs> and and again too it's it, it's just me feeling like too much of the like smarmy self self aggrandizing cleverness is being shoved in my face. But I feel like I feel like that's I feel like that's me projecting a lot. Mm -hmm. So I try to I try to give his movies a break. But I also, man, I'm never going to I'm never going to forgive Last Jedi. I don't think, <laughs> man, that's a, it, I didn't have such a visceral reaction like you did to that. I mean, I, it's gotten worse now that I've seen episode nine, because oh. um, I really do think a lot of what makes episode nine not work is what it had to the work it had to do to try to fix episode eight hmm. or ignore it. It had to, it had to be episode eight when there was none. Last Jedi would have been fine if it were about different characters and not part of the big trilogy, and even then, I don't think I would have liked it very much. But it wouldn't have it wouldn't have caused episode nine to turn out like it did. Yeah, yeah, that it definitely didn't. I don't think it helped to, from the way JJ, because I think if maybe if JJ had picked up the ball from where Ryan Johnson left it, then maybe. But but he didn't even. It, sound, it didn't seem like he wanted to. So it looked like JJ was just like, whoa, 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 never mind, never mind. Don't forget all that shit. <laughs> yeah, there was nothing to work with. Yeah. I wonder, I wonder, here's what I wonder. If Ryan Johnson had made an episode nine, what would that have been about? <laughs> I feel like I, I feel like I would not like it, but I wouldn't be as disappointed, if that makes any sense. Because I feel like maybe at least then there would have been some creative cohesion. Yeah. To, to eight and nine. At least then it would there would maybe would have been a message in an arc with the characters maybe even though he did his best to try to undo any of that in episode eight. Ah. Hmm. We'll never know. Whatever we got we got movies yeah we'll we got movies. Having movies is better than not having movies I guess. No, that's true. Um, that's true. It was fun to see people do Star Wars things. Uh huh. <laughs> and Broom Boy's still out there holding it down for everybody. Yeah. That was fun. I was I was I was like Nito. Lightsabers and spaceships. I like that. <laughs> I like those things. <laughs> uh, I mean, there was, I had no emotional attachment to it, which is unfortunate. Usually I do, but I just, this time around I didn't. So, yeah. Oh, well. Okay. Yeah. We've, I think we've been, I think, I think our therapy session has, has run its course. We've done it. It was very cathartic. Uh, I was good to get that stuff off my chest though. Cause I, I don't know. I, I feel bad saying I negative things about it anything i don't want to not like something i don't want to be bummed about anything Me too. and i've been trying not to talk about it yeah. because of those reasons i, I also don't want to like poison anyone if no one's seen it yet I, I i desperately want somebody to go and watch it so i can i can like siphon off of their happiness right. i want somebody to watch it and love it and explain to me why they love it so i can find a way to love it myself totally 
Absolutely. Uh, that's, that's what I want so badly. I want that too. But, I haven't yet found that person. <laughs> yeah. So who knows when that will happen? <laughs> Oh man! Well, th- hey, thanks for talking to me. I, uh, I was it was kind of like an impromptu thing. I've been wanting to talk about it, so I'm glad you were around. Oh, thank you. Yeah. No, it, was, it was good. Cool. Uh, I think I, I needed to sort out my thoughts this way. I uh, speaking of Star Wars, I think I don't know if you're around, but I think we're going to try and play Battlefront tomorrow if you want to join. Oh. So. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I have any plans. So yeah. yeah, I can get it installed. Oh yeah, yeah. Download it now. It's huge. But I'm telling you, this is a it's a renaissance for this game. It's back. Everybody says it's back. So, battle. I'm serious. Everybody's talking about how it's bad. It's not a, I'm not joking. It sounds know, sarcastic. But it's Every a... time I play Battlefront, I just there's an explosion of Star Wars sounds, and then I die, and then I hit spawn, and then I die. I mean, it's it's absurd, and I have a I somehow have a good time every time. But man, I, do I never have any clue what's going on? Well, yeah, no, that's true. So. Well, hopefully, uh, hopefully, you enjoy with <laughs> because Jacob will uh, Jacob will be there, and uh, hopefully, we get Omar over there. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. So, cool. Yeah. All right, I'm in. I'll, I'll text tomorrow. Cool. All right. Well, I guess I'll talk to you then. See you then, Lawrence. All right. See you, man. Okay. Bye. Ah, uh, Lawrence is the best. Lawrence is the best. Love talking to that guy about Star Wars and everything else.